In the Hero Academia universe, heroes began to appear among ordinary people after the birth of a luminous child. Over time, about 80% of the population began to have an unusual ability called a quirk. In children, it manifests itself at the age of four years. But our protagonist Izuku Midoriya, or Deku, was born an ordinary boy with no ability, which is why he was constantly bullied in kindergarten and at school. But he loved heroes very much, and constantly asked his mother to play him a video about the almighty hero number one. The owners of a quirk use their powers to protect the population from villains or natural disasters. People who choose heroism as a profession are called professional heroes. There is a whole ranking of heroes based on popularity, effectiveness, and contributions to the hero society. But to become a professional hero, you need to get into the Hero Academy. The Yui Academy is considered the most prestigious, and the main character Midoriya and his classmate Bakugo dream of getting into it. Bakugo, or Kachin, has a very powerful quirk. The sweat on his palms is like nitroglycerin, and he can use it to create explosions. Deku has always admired Bakugo's determination and quirkiness, but due to the fact that Kachin has some kind of complexes, he constantly pours out all his aggression on Midoriya and humiliates him in every possible way. Deku is cowardly and completely indecisive, but one day of humiliation from Bakugo, he finally got it, and he turned around to attack him, but abruptly changed his mind. Midoriya was attacked by a monster. The monster almost made Midoriya lose consciousness, but All Might came to his aid, who destroys the monster with one blow and puts it in a bottle to take it to the police. Seeing his idol, Deku was about to ask a couple of questions, but All Might was in a hurry somewhere and flew away from him. However, Midoriya got caught on his leg, causing All Might to stop somewhere on the roof. Deku then asked if he could become a professional hero without a quirk, but he didn't have time to hear the answer because All Might went out of steam and turned into a frail boy. It turns out that five years ago, he was seriously injured, because of which his stomach and half of his lungs were removed. Constant operations exhausted him, and now he can turn into his heroic form for only three hours a day. But at the same time, no one should know about his secret, because the almighty symbol of the world, to which all heroes are equal. While they were flying to that rooftop, All Might dropped the monster's bottle, causing it to escape and take Bakugu's hostages, taking his quirk for himself. The monster was about to turn Kachin, but he resisted with all his might, although the professional heroes still could not help him because they were afraid to attack the monster due to the likelihood of Bakugo being destroyed. No one was going to save the student. Even the Almighty stood and looked at it from the side, and only Midoriya had the courage to attack the monster with his powerful briefcase, which contained incredibly dangerous notebooks and pencils. But for unknown reasons, it did not destroy the monster. Seeing Deku's determination, All Might turns into his heroic form with the last of his strength and destroys the monster. On the way home, all Might catches up to Deku and reveals that he has an incredibly powerful quirk called One for All, and one of its features is that it can be transferred to other people. All this time, All Might was looking for a worthy successor to whom he could entrust such a powerful quirk. Seeing how Deku ran to save his classmate, realizing that he had very little chance of defeating the monster, All Might realized that it was Deku who should pass on his abilities. But the problem is that an ordinary body cannot withstand such power, it will simply break into pieces. Therefore, they will begin their 10-month training to prepare Midoriya to pass on his quirk and enter the Hero Academy. In order to get All Might's abilities, Deku had to eat his hair, after which he immediately ran to the selection in the Hero Academy, not understanding what power he received and how to use it. The practical part of the Yui Academy selection consists of a 10-minute battle. In the built city polygon, the guys will have to fight with robots of different levels, there are three of them in total. For the destruction of the robot, points are awarded, and their number depends on the strength of the enemy. There is also another type of robot, but for which points are not awarded. Students were advised to simply run away from him. During the test, Midoriya just ran around the training ground, trying to find at least someone, but almost all the robots had already been dismantled. A bunch of students got high scores while Deku ran with zero. Time was running out, and at some point everyone saw a huge robot, for which they do not give points. Everyone started to run away from him, but Midoriya noticed how the girl was squeezed in the rubble, because of which she could not escape there. He was the only one who decided to help her. 
Deku jumped towards the robot with incredible speed and destroyed it with just one blow. Last year, there were people who also destroyed this robot, but no one was able to do it with one blow. It turned out that 10 months is not enough to fully prepare your body for such loads. Jumping up to the robot, Deku injured both of his legs and also hitting him, injured his arm. He began to fall to the ground, but he was protected from the blow by the girl he saved, whose name is Ochako Uraraka. Her quirk is the ability to make any object weightless. This ability helped Deku not fall onto the asphalt. Everyone admired his act, especially Tenya Ida, a nerd who has engines in his legs, allowing him to run very fast. The test is over. Deku scored zero points, which meant he failed. Further written test, which he passed with excellent marks. But due to the fact that he scored zero points for the practical part, the likelihood that he would be accepted was extremely small. But it turned out that the judges who judged the students gave extra points for saving a person during the test, thanks to which Deku scored enough points to enter the hero faculty. Midoriya entered the class with Bakugo, Idai, and Uraraka. They got here because they successfully passed the qualifying tests. But it turns out that this is not the only way to enter the academy. If you are strong enough or smart enough, then you can be taken on a recommendation. This is exactly what Momo Yoirozu did here. Having a creation quirk that allows her to create all kinds of items like weapons. Also on the recommendation, Shoto Todoroki got here. His ability is to control two elements. The right hand can create ice, and the left one generates heat. Thanks to this combination, Shoto is one of the strongest students in the academy. They entered Class 1A, whose homeroom teacher will be Shota Aizawa, or Subtrigolova. His quirk allows him to erase any other quirk just by looking at any part of his target's body. But for this, he must constantly keep his eyes open. If he blinks or looks away from the target, the erase effect will instantly disappear. As a test of his students, he organized eight tests for them. Points are awarded for each of them, depending on the place that the student took. The one who, according to the sum of points of all tests, will be in last place, will be expelled from the academy. Since Midoriya hasn't yet mastered his quirk because he takes damage from using it, the likelihood of him being expelled skyrockets. As expected, in the first five tests, he was the last one. And in order to score at least some points, he must apply his quirk to throwing the ball. But the problem is that Aizawa's gaze erases his ability during the throw, due to the fact that it will hurt Deku's arm. And if a student cannot throw a ball without hurting his hand, then he is not worthy to study at the academy. So Midoriya had to cheat and throw the ball with his finger. So Trigolova praised him for his creativity and accepted the result. It turned out that despite the high scores in the fifth test, Midoriya still ended up last in terms of points. But it turns out that Aizawa lied about deductions in order for the students to give their best. All Might decided to become a teacher in order to oversee the progress of his hair Deku. He also organized trials, but this time to train teamwork. Before entering the academy, all students had to draw a costume that they would like to have in the future, and a company that cooperates with the school will be involved in their creation. These costumes will help students to control their abilities, and to reveal them to the maximum. But since Deku didn't have any quirk yet at the time of filing, he simply drew a costume resembling All Might, and his mother sewed this costume for him. The essence of the test is that all students are randomly divided into teams of two people. Then two teams are selected to fight against each other. Some will be villains and others will be heroes. According to the scenario, the villains hid the bomb somewhere in their lair, and the heroes are required to figure out its location and either neutralize all the villains or steal a nuclear bomb in the allotted time. The villains in turn must protect the bomb or defuse the heroes. Deku got into the team to Uraraka, and they will fight against Ida and Bakugo. Team Deku got the role of heroes. During the battle, Bakugo made the most of his suit, which allows him to build up a code and then create a massive explosion like a small warhead. But due to the fact that they fought in a room where such powerful explosions are useless, Deku was able to dodge Bakugo's attacks. Since there was little time left before the end of the test, Midoriya decided to expose himself to Bakugo's attack and with his blow, create a huge hole and shake the building so that Uraraka could use his weightlessness quirks and grab the bomb while bypassing Ida, who, with the help of his engines and legs, would not let her do it. Deku's team won, but he himself ended up in the hospital with serious injuries, where he was treated by the academy nurse, who has the ability to heal, 
allowing her to speed up the regeneration of any person with her kiss. After the test, Deku was respected by many people, and even chose him as an old age. But he decided that it would be better to be the head of the class Oida, since he is very responsible for everything, because he wants to become the same professional hero as his older brother Ingenium. The students were going to have a lesson on saving people during natural disasters. For this, a separate training ground was created, to which students traveled by bus. Three teachers had to control everything. Harasserhead, Almighty, and the 13th. This is also a professional hero. His quirk allows him to create the effect of sucking a black hole at the tip of any of his fingers. The suction is so powerful that not even light can escape it. When everyone arrived at the training ground, it turned out that All Might would miss this lesson due to the fact that on the way to the academy, he was heroic in his perfect form. And since he had limited time for this, he simply ran out of steam, so he was forced to restore his strength at the academy. In addition, after he passed on his one-for-all quirk to Deku, his strength waned, and the amount of time he could spend in his hero form decreased. But even without the Almighty, the lesson must take place, and for this, the students were instructed. But just as they were about to begin their practice, a portal appeared out of nowhere and monsters began to emerge from it, led by Tomura Shigaraki, who wanted All Might to know pain. Their organization is called the League of Villains, and the goal is to destroy the Almighty, that is, the symbol of the world. But since he did not come to class, they decided to call him. To do this, you need to start destroying students, and then he will come to their aid. Eraserhead began to fight the monsters alone, and the 13th was to ensure the evacuation of the students. But they were prevented from doing this by Kurochiri, who was able to create a fog that works like a teleport, from which all these monsters just crawled out. Since dealing with all the students at once is quite a difficult task, Kurajiri teleports the students to different places where monsters are already waiting for them, but which the students were able to handle. Shigaraki was aware of Eraserhead's abilities, his weakness being that his eyes must remain open at all times. You can tell by his hair if he's using his quirk. When Eraserhead erases an ability, his hair will rise up. Using this knowledge, Shigaraki severely injured Eraserhead, injuring his elbow. Then Nomi started attacking him. Nomu is a genetically engineered monster that can be controlled by its owners. Since their goal is to destroy All Might, they developed a plan, because it was not for nothing that they decided to attack him during the students' studies. Their trump card is Nomu, who has several quirks, one of which is absorption. Thanks to her, he can absorb the blows of Deku and All Might. Also, someone told them that the All Might has become much weaker than before, but we still don't know who it is. Thirteenth, who fought Kurojiri, was also seriously injured, so it was decided to send Aida to the academy to retrieve the heroes. With the help of teamwork, they managed to pass Kurojiri and sent the headman for help. This news greatly alarmed Shigaraki due to the fact that they did not plan to fight with professional heroes, so they decided to run away. But before that they wanted to destroy a couple of students. Shigaraki attacked one of the students and almost destroyed her, but with her last breath, she was saved by the Eraserhead. However, they began to attack him with even greater force. Seizing the moment, Deku decided to attack Shigaraki. But his body hit absorbed Nomu, causing Deku not to hurt his arm after the hit like he did before. They realized that Midoriya was a follower of All Might, so the decision was made to destroy him. But at the last moment, an enraged Almighty burst into the training ground, who learned about the attack thanks to Ida. He began to destroy all the monsters at an incredible speed, after which he saved Aizawa and Deku's company, along the way, throwing a hand from Shigaraku's face, which turns out to be his father. He asked the children to take the wounded Aizawa away, while he himself began to attack Nomu. But his blows did not cause any damage, and then he tried to immobilize him by throwing him into the asphalt. However, at the moment of impact, Kurojiri created a portal, and half of the Nomu was under the All-Powerful. Nomu then began to squeeze All Might's old wound. He tried to get out, but Nomu's grip was stronger. Kurojiri decided to put All Might halfway into the portal so that he could close it later, leaving half of All Might behind. Deku realized that the villains knew about all the weaknesses of the peace symbol, so he rushed to help him. True, Kurojiri foresaw this and created a portal in front of Deku but at the last moment he was saved by Bakugo. Meanwhile, Shoto helped an injured All Might escape by freezing and destroying half of Nomu's body. 
but it turned out that another quirk of Nomu is increased regeneration, thanks to which he quickly restored all parts of his body. After that, he attacked the children, but the All Might took the blow. Shigaraki realized that students were another weakness of his, but despite being injured and having very little energy, All Might mustered the last of his strength and began a fierce fist fight to find Nomu's limit. He puts more than 100% of his strength into each punch, and after All Might landed several hundred hits, he still manages to defeat Nomu, which made everyone motivated. This greatly surprised Shigaraki, because Nomu was specifically designed for All Might. They were going to leave because help was coming in the form of professional heroes. In addition, All Might began to intimidate the villains. But it was a bluff that only Deku knew about because All Might started to steam, which meant that he would soon turn into a squishy. But at the same time, he intimidates Shigaraki with the last of his strength so that they leave. However, Kurachiri decides that he needs to see things through to the end. Then they attack All Might. He flew to save Deku, though they saw through him and were going to destroy him. But at the last moment, professional heroes appear, who quickly destroy all the monsters and greatly injure Shigaraki, which is why the villain had to flee. Turning into a pimple, All Might began to thank Deku for winning a few seconds. If it wasn't for Midoriya, he would have been destroyed for sure. Deku's classmate ran up to him to check if he was okay, but to prevent him from learning about All Might's secret, Cementos created a clay barrier, after which Deku and All Might were taken to the hospital. It turned out that Shigaraki has a mentor who orchestrated the attack on All Might. This master was very surprised when he learned that Nomi was defeated and then arrested. He said that they would prepare for a new, more powerful attack. All Might tells Deku that due to this battle, the time he can lead in hero form has been severely reduced. He hopes he has at least an hour. Detective Namasa Chukachi, one of the few who knows about All Might's true form, comes into their room, and all because they are best friends. The detective says that not a single student was injured, so Trigolova and the 13th are badly injured and are in the hospital, but nothing threatens their health. They come to the conclusion that these freshmen are among the strongest of all time, so they will make great heroes. Discharged from the hospital, Deku reunites with his friends and heads home. The Villain League's attack on the Academy was just the start of a huge incident later on. The day after the League of Villains attacked the Academy, the news reported that 72 villains had been captured in the attack. All Might's mentor, nicknamed Gran Torino, received a letter from All Might. In it, he told about Deku, who tried to save a man with his bare hands, and it is also possible that the Almighty will send his student to his mentor for training. Detective Namasa Chikachi is sitting at a teacher's meeting discussing the escaped villains Shigaraki and Kurojiri. All might assume that this was just a demonstration of the power of the League of Villains, and the headmaster thinks that there is someone who controls everything. The next day, the school starts the morning meeting, where Aizawa shows up bandaged. He announces that the UE Sports Festival is coming soon, and therefore all the strongest heroes will be watching this event. And this is a great opportunity for students to join one of the hero agencies. At lunch, Deku, Ida, and Uraraka share their goals, as well as why they want to be heroes. Uraraka wants to become a hero for money, as her family is currently in financial trouble. Ida wants to become the same hero as his older brother Ingenium, and Deku just wants to be a hero. Just then, All Might appears and offers Deku a meal with him until Ida and Uraraka realize All Might's attraction to Deku. Meanwhile, Deku tells All Might about the time he hit Nomu with his power and didn't hurt his arm. All Might praised Deku and then encouraged him to show all his strength at the festival, as they need to show the whole world the new All Might, Izuku Midoriya. A crowd of students have gathered around Class 1, a since this class has become popular due to the battle in the park, and therefore everyone is trying to find out more information about the students in this class and about their quirks. The day of the festival arrives. While the students are waiting for the festival to begin, Todoroki suddenly tells Deku that although he has attracted All Might's attention, he won't be able to win. However, Deku is not going to give up and will put everything he has on the line. Present Mike announces the beginning of the festival and invites the participants of the first year to the stage. Hero Midnight invites Bakugou to the stage as the best of those who have arrived. He needs to make a speech. Bakugou swears that he will be number one. Midnight announces the first stage. 
steeplechase, and talks about the rules, which in fact do not exist, since absolutely everything is allowed to the participants. After the start, everyone starts to crush each other, and after Todoroki freezes everyone and pulls ahead, but many unfreeze and try to catch up with him. The robots that were in the initial exam appear on the way. Todoroki temporarily freezes one of them so that he falls and blocks the path for everyone else. Bakugou and the other heroes use their quirks to simply fly over the robots. Meanwhile, Deku grabs a piece of iron and uses it as a shield and along with Yoyorozu, destroy several robots. The rest of the participants also pass on in different ways. The second obstacle on the way was the canyon, through which everyone needs to get over. Asu and other members with unique quirks pass easily. Again, Todoroki turns out to be the first. Bakugo immediately runs after him, and Deku at this time, together with his shield, climbs over the canyon. The third obstacle was the minefield, where the mines are not lethal, but can disable the participant for a while. Meanwhile, Bakugo catches up to Todoroki, and they start fighting on the run. Deku saw Bakugo flying over the mines and had the idea to collect many mines into the pit and use the blast wave and his shield to push towards the finish line. In the end, Deku overtakes everyone, but Bakugo and Todoroki run right behind him. Deku slams his shield on the ground, and another wave sends him forward again. Ultimately, Deku gets to the finish line first. The first stage is over. The first place was taken by Deku the second by Todoroki, the third by Bakugo. As a result, 42 participants pass to the next stage. Next, Midnight announces the start of the second stage called the Battle of the Chariot. The essence is simple. Everyone needs to unite in teams of two to four participants. Someone will be a horse, and someone will be a rider. Each rider will have a band on his head with the total number of points of his team that they have earned at the end of the first stage, and the task of other teams is to get these bands. Whoever has the most points will take first place. As a result of the first stage, Deku received 10 million points, and whoever takes possession of the armband of the Deku team, that team will win. Everyone is given 15 minutes to create a team. Everyone immediately surrounded Bakugo and asked him to join their team, but Bakugo decides to join Kirishima. On the contrary, everyone runs away from Deku because of his glasses. However, Yuraraka joins him, along with Mai Hatsum and Tokoyami along with his shadow. Todoroki took Aida, Yoyorozu and Kaminari to his team. Bakugo teamed up with Kirishima, Ashido and Shoro, thus formed 12 teams. The start is called, and everyone immediately aims for Deku's chariot. However, with the help of Mi's device and Yuraraki's weightlessness, he takes off and flies far away, while Tokoyami protects everyone with his shadow. Deku is attacked by two teams, but they fly away again, but this time they are attacked in flight by Bakugou. Everyone is again protected by Tokoyami, while Bakugou is pulled back by Sarah. It turned out that Deku's plan was to simply dodge all attacks. According to the preliminary results, everyone from Class A, except for Deku, already has zero points, since all other classes began to take points from students of Class A. Then Bakugo decides to change the plan and knock out points from other classes first, and then deal with Deku points. Bakugo loses his temper and attacks Monoma. However, Monomu easily dodges. It turns out Monomu is able to copy any other people's quirks after coming into contact with them. Then Bakugo attacks again and pulls out two bandages at once, and they immediately fall into the top three but Bakugo wants to be the first, and therefore decides to take absolutely all the armband from the Monomo team. Meanwhile, Todoroki catches up with Deku. His goal is to get 10 million points, but he is not the only one so smart. Everyone is hunting for Deku in parallel. Todoroki's team uses Kaminari's electricity to electrocute everyone and then freeze them to the ground. Todoroki's team attacks Deku's chariot again, but Deku sticks to his left side and dodges. However, Ida steps in and turns on the turbo jet boost, and at breakneck speed, their chariot flies towards Deku, and Todoroki snatches the headband with 10 million. Team Deku decides to get their points back. Then Deku uses his power and air pressure pushes Todoroki's arm back and grabs the top ribbon from his neck. However, he was outmaneuvered and grabbed the 70-point tape. With only a few seconds left, Deku and Bakugo simultaneously fly towards Todoroki's chariot for the bandage. 
Tokoyemi manages to reach Todoroki, but he deflects the blow and time runs out. According to the results of the second stage, the first place was taken by the Todoroki team, the second place was taken by the Bakuji team, the third place was taken by the Shinso Hitoshi team, and the fourth place was taken by the Deku team. Because at the last moment, Tokoyami managed to pull out another large bandage with the help of his shadow. During lunch, Todoroki called Deku to talk, where he said that Deku's power and All Might's power are very similar. So Todoroki assumed that Deku was All Might's illegitimate son. Deku naturally denied everything, but Todoroki still understands that Deku and All might have some kind of hidden connection. Then Todoroki begins to pour out his soul and talk about his difficult childhood. It turns out he never used his left side of fire, as he has a very bad relationship with his father. As Todoroki begins to leave, Deku tells him that his goal is to become as strong as All Might, so he will definitely win the festival. At the same time, All Might met Endeavor, Todoroki's father and second in ranking after him. All Might wondered how he trained his son like that, but Prospector did not want to talk to his sworn rival. Announced the start of the final fights, where 16 participants participate. They will fight in a one-on-one -on -one format, and the opponents will be determined by lot. The two members refuse to participate, as they consider Shinso's participation dishonest, as he can control the other's mind. Midnight accepts their refusal, and now the places of the eliminated will be taken by the members of the Tetsu Tetsu team. Rivals are defined, then Cementos creates an arena. The first fight will be Deku vs Shinso. According to the rules of the final, in order to win, you need to throw the opponent out of the arena or knock him out. The referee will be Cementos. The fight started, and Shinso immediately starts insulting him, causing Deku to get angry and respond to him. But Shinso was waiting for this to take control of Deku's body. He then orders Deku out of the arena. Everyone is shocked and does not understand what is happening. A conscious Deku tries to stop his body, but he fails to do so. Then he remembered the words of Ojiro, where he said that he was pulled out of hypnosis by a blow. Suddenly, in the darkness, Deku sees faces with burning eyes, and he manages to move his fingers. He uses force and is released from control. Deku didn't understand what had happened, but he didn't move his fingers. Shinso tries to hurt Deku in order to take control of him again. However, Deku attacks Shinso and slams him into the ground. Deku wins. Granny heals Deku's fingers, and Deku tells All Might that he saw faces with glowing eyes, and that helped him break Shinso's control. Deku thinks they are the souls of those who may have had the power of one for all. All Might has never experienced this, but thinks it may have come from self-control. Meanwhile, Todoroki met his father by chance. The prospector again began to insist that his son use his fiery side. But Todoroki called his father a scumbag, and he will only use his mother's strength to win. The second fight between Todoroki and Sarah begins. Sarah grabs Todoroki with his ribbons. However, out of anger after talking with his father, Todoroki uses a powerful technique and freezes Sura, and with it the floor of the stadium. The next fight will be between B-class Shiozaki and Kamineri. Kamineri starts attacking with a bolt of lightning, but Shiozaki grabs him with his greens, thus winning. Then the fourth fight between Ida and Mei begins, where Ida chases Mei for a long time, who arranged a duel in a show presentation of her gadgets. She then walked out of the arena herself, and in the end, Ida won. Fifth duel between Aoyama and Ashido. Aoyama launches a laser attack, but Ashido dodges and throws acid at him, then knocks him out with one punch. Sixth fight between Takoyami and Yoyorozu. Takoyami easily pushes Yoyorozu out of the arena and wins. The seventh fight will be between Tetsu Tetsu Steel and Kirishima. These are two powerful fighters with similar quirks, they both attack each other and fall at the same time. Ultimately, a draw is declared, but when they come to their senses, the winner will be determined. In the eighth battle, Yuraraka and Bakugo will meet. Bakugo offers her to surrender before the fight starts, but Yuraraka is serious. Bakugo starts attacking Yuraraka non-stop. She dodges and in parallel collects fragments above the arena. After accumulating the shards, she throws them at Bakugo. But Bakugo destroys her entire plan with one blow. Yuraraka's powers reached their limit, so Bakugo won. Deku accidentally runs into Endeavor in the hallway, who praises Deku for his excellent fight.
adding that he can even defeat All Might. Deku was about to leave, but the prospector said that he was waiting for the moment when his son would surpass the all-powerful. But for now, Deku needed to try to show a worthy fight against his strongest son. All participants have regained strength, which means that Deku and Todoroki will fight in the quarterfinals. After the announcement of the start, Todoroki immediately attacks with ice, but Deku destroys his block with his finger, which causes serious damage to several fingers. Deku thus tries to understand Todoroki's weaknesses. Deku notices that Todoroki is shaking from the cold, which means he should use the fireside. This angers Todoroki, and he attacks Deku, but Deku knocks him back with his broken arm. Deku encourages Todoroki to use his fireside as he doesn't use his power to 100% due to his grudge. Todoroki remembered an incident from the past when his mother poured boiling water on him, for which his father sent her to a psychiatric hospital. Then he realized that Deku had been trying to help him all this time. Todoroki attacks Deku, but Deku jumps towards him. The judges try to stop this fight, but Deku destroys the arena by force, which is why he flew out of the arena and Todoroki won. After the fight, Todoroki is approached by his father and invites him to his agency, but Todoroki has not yet forgiven his father, so he refused. Aida's fight against Chiyozaki begins, where Aida simply pushes his opponent out of the arena and wins. Meanwhile, Grandma performed the operation and partially restored Deku's bones. However, due to numerous injuries, he was left with a scar on his right arm. Grandma tells Deku that he needs to change his way of training. Then Deku suggests to All Might that he choose another successor for himself. But All Might believes in Deku, so he tries to motivate him. Ingenium on a mission met Chizome Akaguro, who destroys the heroes, and he also smashes Ingenium to pieces. Bakuga and Kirishima's next fight. Bakugo realized that Kirishima's weakness was the long use of his quirk, causing Bakugo to enter the semi-finals. In the semi-finals, Todoroki and Aida meet, where Aida turns on full power and tries to push Todoroki out in 10 seconds. But he fails and Todoroki goes to the final. Second semi-final fight between Bakugo and Tokoyami. Bakugo uses a flash grenade and defeats Tokoyami. The final fight will be between Bakugo and Todoroki. Todoroki attacks first and freezes Bakugou and half of the arena. However, Bakugou managed to get out and starts a counterattack. He throws Todoroki out of the arena, but Todoroki manages to stop himself with ice. Bakugou calls on Todoroki to use his fire side and then attacks with a powerful blow, thereby destroying the floor of the arena and knocking Todoroki back a couple of tens of meters. Bakugo grabs Todoroki and insults him for not using his full power. Midnight comforts Bakugo. In the end, Bakugo was the winner. The award ceremony begins, where Bakugo won first place however, he was tied up so that he would not blow up the arena. Second place went to Todoroki, and third place went to Tokoyami and Aida. The All Might appears and distributes rewards to the winners. In class, Aizala announces a special class hour where all students have to choose hero names. But before that, it shows the number of hero agency invitations sent to the students. Todoroki received over 4,000 invitations and Deku Zero, as not everyone is ready to work with Bakugou's exuberant nature. Everyone chose a name for themselves. Then Aizawa talks about the future internship. He distributed forms to everyone and gave the students two days to choose. Meanwhile, Cementos is processing the incoming invitations for students along with the Almighty. They found one invitation for Deku. All Might was surprised that he was invited to the Grand Torino Academy. After All Might comes to Deku and tells him about the invitation from his former teacher of the Grand Torino School, who worked at the school for about a year, and he was All Might's homeroom teacher. He knows about the power of one for all, and therefore chose Deku. The news was about the attack on Ida's brother. It was a mat that destroys heroes. He had already destroyed 17 heroes and maimed 23. So Ida chose for himself an internship at the Hosu Agency, where his brother worked. Aizawa distributes hero costumes to everyone and sends them for internships. Deku arrives at the Grand Torino Agency, where he finds the teacher lying on the floor in a red puddle. It turned out that he just dropped a sausage with ketchup and fell into it. Grand Torino started jumping around the room very quickly, telling Deku to show his strength. Deku puts on his new, upgraded suit. The old man then asks Deku to attack him with one for all power. 
the old man begins to quickly attack Deku, who tries to figure out the old man's movements. But Gran Torino grabs him by the face and drops him to the ground, and then he leaves for food, while forcing Deku to clean everything up. Meanwhile, Stain was found by Kurijiri and Shigaraki, who invited him to join the League of Villains and deal with the heroes and their students. However, Stain rudely refused. He immobilized the villains with his quirk and asked to be taken back to the Hosu area. After the teleportation, Stain goes hunting, and Shigaraki and Kurajiri realize that he only destroys unworthy heroes, so they are not on the way with him. Then they teleport three Nomu to destroy the city. Meanwhile, the heroes began training at various academies. The next day, Deku was assisted in his training by a microwave oven, which gave him an epiphany called One for All Full Power Coverage. Torino offers to practice right away. The Deku has three minutes to hit the old man. In the end, Deku took all the blows, but the old man praised him for making so much progress in just one day. Shukachi comes to All Might's school and tells that Nomu is connected with the instigator, and they also identified Nomu's identity. This is a former criminal. Based on the examination, the genes of four people are mixed in Nomu, and he has four quirks at once. Shukachi suggested that there is someone who can also transfer his power. Meanwhile, Deku is sent to fight evil. They will also pass near Hosu, where Ida and the hero Manuel are patrolling. The hero realized that Ida wants to avenge his brother, so he decides to warn him and remind him of the law, which states that heroes cannot use their quirks for personal revenge. Ida pretended to understand, but he was still going to implement what he had planned. Meanwhile, Deku and an old man pass by Hosu, where their train is suddenly attacked by Nomu. Gran Torino grabs Noma and flies with him away from the train full of people. Deku follows them. Ida and Manuel also saw the explosions, so they moved to the spot. However, on the way, Ida turned into an alley where he found Stain. Ida immediately decided to avenge his brother, but Stain, learning this, decides to destroy Ida. Stain easily lays Ida on the floor and immobilizes him, and is about to finish off Ida. Parallel to this, Deku encounters two more Nomu who are fighting a bunch of heroes. However, when he heard that the manual was looking for Ida, Deku realized that Ida had gone for revenge, so he went after him. In the alley, he found Ida and Stain. Then he turns on the full cover and throws the villain away from Ida. Stain asks Deku to leave or he will destroy them both. Deku, on the other hand, skillfully sends SMS to all nearby heroes about his location and then attacks him with a powerful blow. However, the villain manages to injure Deku and paralyzes him. Todoroki suddenly appears and fires Stain away. They start to fight. The villain hurt his face and tried to paralyze him, but Todoroki defended himself with fire. However, after the battle, he received damage to his arm. Stain attacks again, but Deku appears and knocks the villain back. It turned out that due to Deku's first blood type, the villain's paralysis had almost no effect on him which is why he was able to move. Deku and Todoroki take turns attacking Stain, but Deku gets paralyzed again. Afterwards, Stain aims at Todoroki and almost catches him, but Ida saves Todoroki from being hit with a reverse boost. By teamwork, they knock out Stain. Meanwhile, the prospector fights against the Nomu, with whom Gran Torino fought, but it turns out that the old man himself is not a miss. He divides the Nomu and drops it to the ground. Gran Torino is sent to the coordinates in the alley, and the prospector himself joins the battle against the remaining two Nomu. The prospector asks everyone to go to the lane where the guys have already tied up the villain. They are greeted by Gran Torino, who is glad that Deku is okay. Ida apologizes for this incident. A flying Nomu suddenly appears and grabs Deku. At this moment, the villain is released and destroys Nomu, saying that he did this for the benefit of the future high society. However, after that, he is going to destroy everyone, but because of his broken ribs, he simply passes out. Gran Torino, the manual, and the head of the police Hosu, Kenji Suragame, came to the hospital to the heroes. He thanks the guys for this excellent work done. Gran Torino calls All Might about a captured villain who is sick of the perfect world ideology, and Torino believes that he is connected to a league of villains, and perhaps this will attract a new wave of villains with a similar ideology. He also reports that All for One is back in the game. Gran Torino asks All Might to tell Deku the whole truth about what happened to his quirk and to himself. 
Two days later, absolutely everyone knows about the villain who destroys the heroes. They even made a video about him with a full description of his biography. Many are starting to join the hero killer movement. A large number of new villains, every day more and more willing to join the League of Villains. A few days later, Ida and Todoroki are released from the hospital. Ida goes home, and Todoroki decides to go to Endeavor to find out about the well-being of the hero who allegedly saved everyone from the hero killer. After everything that happened, All Might conducts the basic training of the heroes, where he teaches them the rescue sprint. An entire field has been set aside for this, and the purpose of the sprint is to save All Might, who will be in the center of the field. The one who saves All Might first wins. The first group of four starts. From the very beginning, Sarah breaks ahead, but Deku overtakes everyone, and Deku borrowed movements from Bakuga. However, he slipped and Surat became the winner. All Might was surprised by Deku's results and invited him to his office. There, the Almighty told about the story about him and the emergence of the power one for all. Just as the quirks began to appear, a certain man appeared who was called All for One. He manipulated people professionally and wanted to take over all of Japan. His quirk allowed him to take the quirks of others, as well as transfer them to other people. He decided to choose the side of evil and became the leader of all the villains. Quirks he passed on to trusted people, but not all human bodies could withstand the transferred power. When the body could not withstand the power, the person became a weak-willed doll. Thus the Nomu appeared. Also, the villain had a brother who was born without a quirk, but he had a strong spirit of justice. It hurt him to look at his older brother, and he resisted him. His brother gave him a quirk that accumulated power. It turned out that he had a hidden quirk to transfer power to others, and when these two quirks mixed, the power of one for all appeared. In order to live forever, all for One found a quirk of immortality for himself, and his younger brother decided to pass on his power to his successors. From that moment on, the path of strength, One for All, began. The younger brother hoped that someday enough power would accumulate to be able to stop his older brother, and it was the Almighty who managed to defeat the villain. However, All for One survived and founded a League of Villains. One day, Deku will have to face a great evil and defeat him. Deku announces that he is ready to save the world. Also, the Almighty wanted to tell about his fatal illness, but he could not do it. There is a week left before the final exam of the U School, where there will be a written and practical exam. Yoiorozu volunteered to help everyone prepare for the written exam, so she invited everyone to her house for the weekend. And B-class student Kendo said that the practical exam will again fight against robots. A week passes, the written exam begins, which lasts three days. It's time for the practical exam. Principal Nezu reveals that they have changed the exam rules a bit as they want to focus more on one-on-one -on -one battles. Therefore, they were paired up according to their quirks, and they would fight against the teachers. All students will have 30 minutes to handcuff the teacher to pass the exam, or run out the exit gate and take the exam. To equalize the strength, each teacher puts weights on their arms and legs, which make up half of their body weight. The first to fight Kirishima and Sato against teacher Cementos. The battle begins, Cementos immediately creates cement walls. Kirishima and Sato show their quirks and go ahead, but Cementos deliberately stalls for time, as he knows the limitation in using their quirk. They ended up failing the exam as they passed out. Asui and Tokoyami's second fight against Ectoplasm. The students combine their quirks, but Ectoplasm creates up to 30 clones and attacks with them. However, Asui and Tokoyami defend well. Ectoplasm then summons a giant clone that attacks and takes over their bodies. Tokoyami tries to attack with her shadow, and Asui takes out her handcuffs, and through the shadow they handcuff the teacher, thus successfully passing the exam. Ojiro and Aida's third fight against the loader. Aida uses hyper-acceleration to spin Ojiro around and throws him towards the gate, thus allowing them to pass the exams. In the fourth fight, a pair of Todoroki and Yoyorozu against Aizawa. Aizawa disables Todoroki's quirk and hangs him up. Yoirozu creates a flash grenade and saves Todoroki. He escapes and leaves a wall of ice behind him, while Yoirozu creates Aizawa ribbons from a nickel and titanium alloy, which causes the alloy to harden when heated. They set up a trap and threw ribbons at Aizawa with a catapult. They tied the teacher with ribbons and handcuffed him. The fifth fight between Ariyama and Yuroraku against the 13th. The students also successfully passed the exam. 
The fight between Kaminari and Ashido against the director begins. The director uses a crane to destroy the building and cover the students with rubble. The director's quirk is a highly developed intellect despite being an animal. Ashido and Kaminari are running out of time, so they fail the exam. The seventh fight of Jiro and Kuji pair against present Mick. The teacher attacks with sound waves. Then Kuji begins to control the insects, and they envelop Mick, thus giving victory to the couple. Shoji and Turu's next fight is against Strelok. The gunslinger attacks with shots from Shoji, while Toru became invisible and easily handcuffed the teacher. Minoru and Shioru's ninth fight against Midnight with the lunatic quirk, as she can put her to sleep with her body odor. Shioru pushes Minoru away so that he doesn't fall under the spell however, he falls under it himself and falls asleep. Then Midnight finds Minoru and attacks it with a whip. Minoru starts running to get Midnight away from the gate, and then he throws his sticky balls and sticks her. Then they pass through the gate, and the team successfully passes the exam. The last fight left is Deku and Bakugou versus All Might. First, Deku wants to discuss the plan with Bakugou, but he was against it, and therefore hit him in the face. The Almighty intervened, destroying an entire block with one blow. All Might asks them to pretend that he is now a villain, so Bakugou immediately attacks All Might in the face, but later ends up on the ground. All Might then switches to Deku and throws it at Bakugou. Bakugou angrily says that he will never accept help from Deku's trash, causing Deku to use his power to attack Bakugou and then grab him and run into an alley. There, Bakugou came up with a plan where he distracts All Might from one side with an explosion while Deku attacks All Might from the other side and runs towards the gate. But things don't go according to plan as All Might breaks Bakugou's gauntlet and then Deku. He throws them at the building, but Bakugou attacks All Might and throws the deck towards the gate. However, All Might catches up to Deku and slams him into the ground. Bakugou then decides to attack with his strongest attack, but is immediately slammed into the ground. Deku uses his power to punch All Might in the face before taking Bakugou and running with him towards the gate. In the end, Deku and Bakugou passed the exam. Meanwhile, villains who want to join the League of Villains have come to Shigaraki's cafe. Shigaraki does not want to receive anyone, so he asks Kurojiri to destroy the guests. However, Kurojiri suggests listening to the speakers first. The first newcomer is Toga, a psychopathic schoolgirl who is already suspected of a number of crimes, and the second is named Dabi, who wants to play the role of a villain in their league. Hearing the third name, Stain, Shigaraki lost his temper and decided to destroy the newcomers, but Kurojiri intervened and redirected the blows, as they needed new villains. At school, Aizawa informs everyone that they are all going to camp together. The kids went to the store first. Shigfreki finds Deku near the stalls. He needed to talk to him, so he forces Deku, otherwise he will destroy him with one finger. Shigaraki reveals that he also hates the hero killer, and they are clearly not allies. But Deku does not understand Shigaraki's motives, and even though Stain wants to create a perfect world, Deku condemns him. Shigaraki decided to use Stain's motives to carry out his plan. Meanwhile, Yuraraki comes to Deku and finds him with Shigaraki. The villain, seeing Deku's girlfriend, decides to let him go, and warns in advance that if Deku goes after him, he will destroy many innocent people. Shigaraki leaves, but Deku follows up with the question of what everyone needs for one. Shigaraki replies that no one knows, but he knows for sure that next time he will destroy Deku. After Shigaraki dissolves into the crowd, Ruraraka then reported the incident to the police, and the mall was temporarily closed. The heroes and the police independently investigated, but Shigaraki was never found. Then Deku was invited to the police station, where he spoke with the investigator Naoma Tsukachi, who is investigating the League of Villains. He thanked Deku for the information, and on the way out they meet All Might, as well as Deku's mom. They then drive home under police escort. Tsukachi tells All Might that it was like a chance encounter with a villain, so they continue to watch the League of Villains, but they will also need the help of the Yui school. All Might looks to the investigator and his quick lead to find the League of Villains. The Yui school's swimming pool hosts a training session where students compete in speed with quirks. However, Aizawa appears and announces the end of their competition as pool time has come to an end, as well as the start of summer classes due to the end of the first semester. 
Now two classes one and one bit are going to summer camp to train their quirks and improve their stamina. The students are taken to the gathering place in front of the camp, where they meet a team of professional wildcat heroes and a powerful male cat. Hero Mandalay shows the camp to which the students must reach. Then Pixabob throws everyone off the cliff into the forest of magical animals, and now the goal of all students is to get to the camp through the forest, which is filled with magical creatures. In this regard, Shoji and Jiro began to hunt down the beasts, and everyone else began to destroy these monsters. As a result, the beaten and tired students successfully reached their destination. They were told the conditions of their stay in the camp, and they were also introduced to Mandala's nephew named Koda, who hates heroes since his parents of heroes were destroyed in the line of duty. Deku decided to get to know him, however. Koda used a very powerful punching technique. In the meantime, all students were placed in the camp. Training starts the next day, so all the students went to recover in a hot spring. There Koda fell off the wall as he saw irresistible women. Deku caught him and took him to the medical center. Mandalay told about the dead parents of Koda, and he is also in the camp, since he has nowhere else to go. The next day, Aizawa gathered everyone and said that today's goal is to increase the strength of each student's quirk. To show the change in power level over the past three months, he invited Bakugu and asked him to throw the ball again. The previous record was 705 meters, and now he threw 709 meters. With this, Aizawa showed that Bakuda's quirk power level had not changed much in three months, and therefore, it is now very important to strengthen quirks and increase stamina. In parallel with this, the League of Villains lay low. However, this is just the calm before the storm, as Shigaraki has gathered strong villains and created a strike force, and now the villains are preparing to implement their audacious plan. Meanwhile, the students begin their long training sessions where each develops their own quirk. Class 1 bit began the same training under the leadership of Vlad and under the supervision of Wildcats. Ragdoll, with the help of his quirk, can observe hundreds of people at once and find their weaknesses. Pixabop can control the Earth. Mandalay has telepathy. She can transmit messages from a distance and read people's minds. Tiger is responsible for attacks and destruction, so he took up Deku training. After training, the students cook their own food. Deku noticed Koda leaving and decided to give him some food. However, Koda refused Deku's help. Meanwhile, the strike force is plotting to attack the camp, but for now they are waiting for the main body to arrive. Students at this time train hard, and in the evening they pass courage tests, and those who did not pass the UE school exam, Aizawa takes with him to class. The essence of the test is that one class scares the other, so everyone is divided into groups of two heroes using a random house. However, Deku is left without a mate. Class B will be the first to scare, and Class A will act as victims. At the same time, Aizawa led the students to the classroom where Manamu and teacher Vlad were waiting for them. They all receive a telepathic message from Mandalay that they have been attacked. Aizawa immediately goes to help them. However, on the street, he is attacked by Dabi and attacks point blank with fire. But Aizawa dodges disciples Dobie's quirk and slams him face first into the ground. However, Dobby dissolves as it turns out it was a copy made by Twice. Aizawa meets some of the students coming out of the forest. He sends students to Vlad's class, and he goes to the forest. Meanwhile, part of the forest was filled with poisonous gas. In different places, the villains simultaneously attacked a group of students and heroes. Spinner and Magna attacked Pixie Bob, Mandalay, and Tigger. Magni immediately knocked out Pixie Bob, and the villains also reported that they were from the strike squad of the League of Villains, and that they now adopted Stein's ideology, which says that every hero should earn the right to be called a hero, and weak heroes should be destroyed. Mandalay and Tiger start fighting against Spinner and Magni. Meanwhile, Deku went to rescue Koda, who was overtaken by Muscle. He nearly destroys the boy, but is saved at the last moment by Deku. When Muscle found out that Deku was in front of him, this is the one whom Shigaraki instructed to destroy in the first place. Muscle immediately attacks and knocks Deku back into the rock. However, Muscle let it slip and said that the target of the strike force was Bakugu. It turned out that Muscle destroyed Kauda's parents, for which Deku decides to attack him with a powerful attack. However, the villain withstands the blow. Then Muscle attacks again, but Deku manages to dodge. Deku has no choice, so he decides to fight Muscle and not back down. As a result, the muscle pins Deku to the ground, 
but the villain is distracted by the cat. Seizing the moment, Deku uses his 1 million percent strength and uses his technique to hit Muscle, slamming him up the mountain and defeating him. Deku takes the boy and heads towards the camp, as he urgently needs to inform the teachers and the cat squad that Bakugou is the target of the villains. On the way, Deku meets Aizawa, who reminds him of his lack of a heroic apprentice license. But since all available forces are now needed, he asked for a message from Mandalay, in which Aizawa issued all students permission to fight. Deku gets to Mandalay and relays Aizawa's message to her, and also tells her that Koda is safe. Mandalay, using her quirk, informed everyone about Aizawa's order, and also asked Deku to pass on the information that the target of the capture of the villains was Bakugo. Deku went looking for Bakuga. However, Magni decided to destroy him. But Spinner stopped him, since, according to Stain's ideology, the villain recognized Deku as a worthy hero. Meanwhile, Bakugu and Todoroki encountered Tuthi, who immediately attacked them. They started to fight the villain, but they fell into a trap as Bakuga's quirk can create a fire, and they can't escape because of the gas behind them. At the same time, Deku encounters Shoji and Tokoyami, whose shadow went out of control during the battle with the villain. It turned out that they were also attacked by Toothy and hurt Shoji's arm by a replicant. Seeing this, Tokoyami lost control of his quirk, and now Tokoyami asks the guys to leave and leave a shadow on him. However, after seeing Bakuga's explosions in the distance, Deku came up with a plan where they would run towards Bakuga and draw a shadow behind them. There he will create a glow, and the shadow will calm down. In the end, they successfully implemented the plan. However, Bakugo decided to wait until the shadow destroyed Toothy. After that, they, along with Todoroki, calmed the shadow. Deku reminded everyone that Bakugo was the villain's target, so he offered to take Bakugo to the camp. They set off, building a kind of shield in front of Bakugo. Meanwhile, Yayorozu created masks for all the students, and Tetsu Tetsu decided to go help the teachers. But Kendo stopped him and suggested that he find the one who creates the gas. The villain was very close, so they easily found him. A villain named Mustard attacked Tetsu Tetsu and broke his mask, causing him to lose his powers as he couldn't breathe. However, Kendo enlarged her arms and created whirlwinds of air that dispersed the gas. Then Tetsu Tetsu attacked the villain with his last strength and knocked him out. Meanwhile, Yuraraka and Asui fight against Togu. Toga attacks Yuraraka, but Asui defends her, causing her tongue to break. Then Toga chains Asui by the hair to a tree. Uraraka attacks the villain and slams her face into the ground. Tobu says that they both smell the same since they are both in love with someone. She suddenly sticks her syringe into Uraraka's leg and draws blood from her. However, Deku and the rest of the guys show up and Togu decides to retreat. It turns out that the villainess is also in love with Deku. Deku suggests they all go to camp together and escort Bakugu. However, it turned out that Bakugu and Tokoyami had disappeared, captured by Mr. Compress, who informed the strike team that they had secured the target, and the villains began to retreat. The guys went in pursuit of the Compress. Dabby and Twice also went to the rally point, and they also summoned Noma with them, thereby accidentally saving Yoyorozu and a vase from trouble. In order not to miss Nomu, Yoyorozu creates a tracking chip, and a ways attaches it with his quirk to Nomu. Another clone of Debbie bursts into the class to the students, but Vlad slams him into the wall. The clone says that the entire hero system stands on only two pillars, the hero All Might and the pinnacle of Yui training. However, just a few incidents can destroy this system, and this crack will spread throughout the heroic world. Aizawa suddenly appeared and destroyed the clone. He leaves Koda, and he goes to help the others. At the training field, Tiger and Mandalay nearly defeated Magna and Spinner, but Kurojiri appeared and freed them. Meanwhile, the guys keep chasing Compress. Deku came up with a plan where Yuraraka makes everyone weightless and Asui launches them straight towards the villain. They end up slamming Compress into the ground right at the Strike Force's rally point. Several villains have already arrived there, who immediately begin to attack the heroes. Dabi scatters everyone with her fire, and Toga attacks her new love Deku, whom she wanted to destroy. However, Shoji stopped her. Todoroki took over twice, while Shoji was able to take possession of the orbs with Bakugu and Tokoyami. It turned out that they were not real balls. Kurojiri appeared, and the villains began to enter his portal. 
At the last moment, Aoyama shoots a laser at Compressor's mask from the bushes, and he drops the balls. Shoji manages to grab one of the balls, and the second ball grabs Dabi. As a result, Tokoyami was saved, and Bakugou was taken away by the villains. The police and firefighters arrived at the scene, who reported that three villains had been captured, Muscle, Mustard Gas, and now a toothless villain. After the incident, Deku was taken to the hospital. The next day, hundreds of journalists arrived at the UE school, while the school was holding a meeting of teachers, where there was a debriefing. The teachers decided to direct all their efforts to protect the students. All Might received a call from Shukachi, saying that they had interrogated Aizaba and Vlad, and possibly found Bakugou's location. When Lieutenant Sansa was gathering information, he found out that a scared man was in one of the buildings. They immediately contacted the owner of the house, and it turned out that there is a bar there. Shukachi then asks All Might to join them. The Almighty agrees. Meanwhile, Deku is recovering in the hospital. His classmates came to support him. There, Kirishima offered to go and save Bakugo, as on the way to Deku's chamber, they, along with Todoroki, accidentally heard the words of Yayorozu, who, with the help of Avas, attached a tracking chip to Nomu, and thereby tracks his location. They asked Yayorozu to make another instrument especially for them. But Ida remembered that he had promised not to get involved in things without permission, so he suggested to just trust All Might and not make any rash moves. This decision was supported by the majority of students. Deku was sent for an examination, where his grandmother cured his hands. However, due to the large number of injuries, the hands did not fully recover. Then the doctor said that if Deku continued to receive such injuries, then his hands would become paralyzed. The doctor also delivered a letter from Kauta, in which he thanked Deku for saving him. Deku received a call from his mother, who asked him to think about leaving U school. However, Deku owes everything to All Might, and since he made him a hero, he cannot let him down. When Deku leaves the hospital with Yerozu, the guys start saving Bakugou. They drive to the Kamina area in Yokohama City. Meanwhile, Chukachi enlisted several heroes in the operation. They started discussing the plan to take over the headquarters of the League of Villains. At this time, the news reported that one of the students of the school had been kidnapped. Shigaraki is very pleased with everything that is happening, and he also suggested that Bakugou join the League of Villains. But Bakugou, even at the cost of his life, would never become a villain, so he refused. Meanwhile, the guys arrived at the place and put on disguises. Walking down the street, they saw a press conference at UE School where the headmaster and some teachers apologized to all the affected students. Then the journalists bombarded them with tricky questions, and ordinary residents began to condemn the actions of the school and teachers. Shigaraki, having seen this press conference, was glad that society is not happy with the heroes, as they do not cope with their duties, and people do not want to forgive the mistakes made by the heroes. The villains call the heroes two-faced people who live for money and fame, and people for what, but they always criticize instead of support. Then Shigaraki began to put pressure on Bakuji's passion for victories, and then completely asks to release him. However, Bakugo takes off and attacks Shigaraki. Bakugo said his goal is to become a famous hero like All Might. Meanwhile, Shukachi and the heroes had already discussed the plan. It turned out that the director and teachers used the press conference to divert the attention of the villains, so the attack of the heroes will be as unexpected as possible. All Might and several other heroes break into Shigaraki's bar and attack the villains. Shigaraki is shocked by what is happening, and therefore asks Kurojiri to move all the Nomu to the bar. However, the impeller covers Kurojiri's mouth. Meanwhile, the guys got to the hangar, where they found a lot of Nomu. However, another part of the heroes broke into the hangar and captured all the Nomu. At the Grand Torino bar, he asks where they're all for one boss is. Suddenly, many portals appear from which the Nomu begins to emerge. Bakugou and the villains are sucked into these portals, and the heroes have once again missed the League of Villains. It turned out that after the heroes took over the barn, the all for one boss appeared, which easily attacked the heroes. Prospector and all might begin to fight Nomu. The Almighty decides to go to the hangar to help the heroes. Meanwhile, All for One destroys Best Jeans, as his quirk doesn't suit him due to the difficulty in controlling it. And Deku and the guys are shocked with fear and can't even move. Shigaraki and other villains emerge from the teleporters along with Bakugou. 
All for one tells him not to be upset about the defeat, because for this he saved all his villains, as well as Bakugu. At that moment, All Might appears and attacks the boss. But All for One uses four quirk at the same time and counterattacks All Might. The boss takes control of Kurojiri and opens a portal for the villains to enter the portal and also take Bakugo with them. All Might attacks the boss again and at the same time tries to save Bakugo, but the boss doesn't let him do it. Deku tries to figure out how to save Bakugo. He figured out how to do it, but without engaging in battle. Deku and Ida then push off the wall so they can fly up thanks to the ice springboard. They successfully take off, and Bakugou flies up to the guys and grabs Kirishima's hand, thus saving Bakugou. Meanwhile, the boss takes over Magn's body and drags all the villains into the portal. All Might gathers his spirit and slams the boss into the ground. After that, All Might partially loses his heroic form. All Might has flashbacks from his youth where he tells his teacher Nana Shimura that he wants to become a symbol of peace. All for one starts insulting All Might's teacher. Then All Might hits the boss with all his might, but flies off in response to the boss's blow for a couple of hundred meters, where Gran Torino picks him up in flight. It turns out their fight is broadcast around the world. All for one attacks All Might and he loses his hero form. Now the whole world sees the true form of the Almighty. The boss reveals that Shigaraki is the grandson of Nana Shimura. Then the helper concentrates his power in his right hand saying that he will not lose. Other heroes also appear and take the wounded. All for one attacks All Might and destroys everything around. After the boss collects a whole combination of quirks and is going to destroy the All Might, they exchange powerful attacks. The hero remembered Gran Torino's instructions, so he concentrated his power on his left hand. But it was a trap and after that he again concentrated power in his right hand and attacked the boss with a powerful blow. All Might raised his hand and turned back into his hero form. In the end, All for One was placed in an iron cell and sent to prison, and All Might pointed a finger at the camera of journalists and said that he was next, but this gesture was for Deku since the peace symbol resigned. After everything that happened, the guys took Bakugo to the police and All Might to the hospital. All Might decides to visit Chukachi and Gran Torino, who are discussing the roots of the Shigaraki family. Then All Might decides to go in search of Shigaraki, but he is stopped by Gran Torino, saying that he and Chukachi will deal with it, and All Might should go to the Yui school. Meanwhile, Todoroki has returned home and finds his angry father, who is now the number one hero, however, he is unhappy that he took this place in this way. Deku received a message from All Might, and they met on the beach. At the meeting, All Might hit Deku in the face because he disobeyed and therefore could go to another world. All Might revealed that his heroic time was up and he can no longer maintain his heroic form, and he praised the deck for being able to save Bakugo without loss or injury. Since All Might has time, he will train the successor. Meanwhile, the principal decided it was time to launch his plan to protect the students. To do this, Teachers need to talk with the parents of the students so that they give permission for the enhanced training of the heroes. In the end, all the students left their homes and went to Yui School's dormitory. Before moving into the Yui dormitory, Aizawa explained the rules and also showed them the new house. The task of the students is to arrange themselves in the rooms. After the settlement, they announced an imminent exam for obtaining a temporary heroic license, which is held twice a year. In this regard, teachers will ensure that students prepare and pass everything at least two super moves. The students put on their costumes and go to the gym, where Aizawa explains why super moves are so important, as well as what qualities the heroes are judged for. For the next 10 days, all students will train quirks twice as hard and learn super moves at the same time, and all hero costumes will be improved. All Mike also came to observe Deku's progress and give out his tips on how to create super moves. All Might instructed Deku to come up with his own unique move, causing him to go into deep thought. He went to the engineering department, where they are improving suits. Ida and Yuraraka also went there. When they met Deku, there was an explosion. This one was Hatsu Mei, and thanks to Deku, he came up with a super move that uses the strength of his legs. Four days later, his costume received stabilizers on his arms and legs, and all the students developed their super moves. The day of the exam has arrived. The goal of all students is to pass this exam and become semi-professional heroes with a temporary license.
1540 students arrived for the exam. So the goal of the first stage is to reduce the number of participants to whoever hit the third target last gets a point. The student who gets two points goes further. The first stage begins, and therefore a huge zone appears. Deku suggested that his classmates come together and act as a group, but Bakugou and Todoroki decide to perform solo. However, after the UE festival was held, the quirks of all the students of the UE school became known to other schools. When the start is announced, everyone starts attacking UE school. However, the students use their quirks and fight off the balls. Then she pins him to the ground. Deku pushes her back with force. But at that moment, a student of the Ketsubu and the guys came up with a plan where Deku decided to become a bait so that Sero and Yuraraka would tie up the opponents. As a result, they successfully passed to the next stage. Meanwhile, Todoroki encounters ten colorful ninjas that he freezes. How is his clanmates? Then the ninja throw water and heavy objects at him, and Todoroki drove them into a trap and undermines the tank, thereby defeating the opponents. Todoroki advanced to the next stage. Meanwhile, Seiko has an IQ quirk that is activated by T and turns her into an evil genius. She, along with her team from CI Academy, spotted the UE group. In turn, they also notice opponents in the building. However, Seiko plays loud music, stopping Jiro. In response, Jiro decides to attack with a sound, but her house is broken with a shot from the roof. The temperature in the room drops sharply, causing Azui to fall asleep. Seiku's goal is to make Yoyorozu use her quirk to heat up and become weak. Yoyorozu guessed that the enemy was waiting for this, but remembered Deku's words, so she creates four pairs of headphones, and then a giant speaker to attack Jiro with a low-frequency sound. Her plan worked, but Seiko grabbed Yoyorozu at the last moment and locked herself in the room with her. However, the guys stopped Seiko, so they went to the next stage. Meanwhile, Bakugu, Kirishima, and Kamineri are attacked by a sophomore from Shiketsu's high school, Seiji Shishikura, who has a meat monster quirk. He immediately turns Kirishima into his flesh, and then the sophomore creates his meat monsters, but Bakugu destroys them with his explosions. Seiji then feints his flesh under the bridge and turns Bakugu into a pile of flesh, but Bakugu manages to throw a Kamenari grenade, which blows up Bakugu and then fries Seiji with lightning, which weakens his control over the monsters. After regaining consciousness, Kirishima knocks out the villain, and then they switch to the already restored students. As a result, all three pass the next stage. According to the preliminary results, 11 U students have already passed to the next stage, and also no one from the U school has yet been dropped out. More meanwhile on the field, Aida and Aoyama decided to team up and help each other. However, Aoyama decides at the last moment to sacrifice himself in order for Aida to fulfill his dream and become a hero. He begins to draw attention with a laser, but suddenly a flock of pigeons appears, controlled by Kyuji. Tokoyami also appears with his shadow, as well as Minoru, who sticks everyone with his balls, and invisible Turu blinds everyone and starts attacking the target with balls, thanks to which they jointly passed the exam. All 100 participants have been selected, as well as all 20 students from UEI have passed to the next stage. The second stage begins, so the building on the battlefield begins to collapse, and now the goal of the students is to save the injured people, which are specially trained actors. In the second stage, each participant has 100 points. For the mistakes made, points are taken away from the participant, and points are added for each saved person. If the participant's points fall below 50, then he is eliminated. Each participant will be assigned an employee who monitors his actions. The start of the second stage was announced, and Deku, along with the guys, found a crying child. However, the boy said that everyone had minus points, since first, they had to ask about the state of health. Then Deku took the boy and carried him to the collection point for the wounded, while everyone else went in search of other victims. Other groups are also gathering the wounded and preparing grounds for them. Suddenly, disguised bandits appeared with their leader, the hero killer whale. Now all students have two goals, to save the victims and also to protect them from the villains. The bandits began their attack and the future heroes were faced with a choice, rescue or attack. While the Deku was thinking about what to do, Shindo decides to detain the criminals with his vibration waves, and he asks everyone else to take the victims away. However, Killer Whale approaches and knocks out Shindo. Therefore, Todoroki intervenes, who attacks Killer Whale with ice. 
Inasa Yorishi also came to his aid. He easily blew off the criminals. But Todoroki decides to attack with fire, and Yurashi attacks with a stream of air, because of which they interfere with each other with their quirks and start arguing. However, they are interrupted by the bandit's cement mixture. They start attacking at the same time, which causes the flames to blow towards Shindo, but Deku manages to save him. Killer Whale then attacks Yorashi with a sound wave and also grabs Todoroki. Meanwhile, Shindo comes to his senses and stops the pursuing criminals and asks Deku to destroy them. Todoroki and Yorashi realize that they had made a mistake, so Todoroki directs fire into Yorashi's airflow, because of which they jointly created a fire whirlwind and surrounded Killer Whale with it. At this time, Deku and other heroes begin to destroy the villains. However, Killer Whale puts out the fire whirlwind, but Deku appears and knocks out the hero. The end of the exam is announced, as the victims are saved. The judges calculated the points of the students, where as a result almost everyone passed except for Bakugou, Yorashi, and Todoroki. Everyone was given leaflets to familiarize themselves with the points on which they were awarded or deducted points. As a result, the heroes who passed the exam received a temporary license of heroes, and those who did not pass the exam have one more chance to get it. To do this, you need to take special courses and pass an individual test. If the results are good, they will also receive a temporary hero license. It turned out that underneath Kami's appearance was Himiko Toga, her metamorphosis quirk. When she absorbs human blood, she can turn into him, and when she scratched his face in a battle with Deku, she received his blood. Meanwhile, the All Mighty visited the Tartar prison, where All for One is being held. All Might came to find out Shikareki's location. However, All for One has no idea where he is, as he sent him free swimming. Also, All for One reported that after the resignation of the All Might, people no longer trust the heroes, and therefore the All Might can only watch how the heroic world falls apart due to his powerlessness. However, all Might understands that One for All wants to destroy All Might and his successor Deku with the help of Shigaraki, but All Might does not intend to give up and promises to crush the villains. On the way home, All Might receives a photo of his provisional license from Deku, so he is overjoyed for his successor. At the dorm that evening, Bakugu asks Deku to talk to him. They enter Ariab, where Bakugu lost to Deku for the first time. Bakugou can't figure out how a weakling with no quirk got into Yui, and then got a quirk, and was even able to get a hero's license. After the battle in Kamina, Bakugou figured out that Deku got his power from All Might, as he saw All for One take and use multiple quirks at the same time. He understood his whole path from beginning to end, but he could not understand why the Almighty chose him as his successor. To answer this question for himself, he invites Deku to fight, but Kugo starts to attack Deku but he dodges as he doesn't want to fight. Bakugou always looked up to All Might, but now that he transferred his power to Deku, he drained his energy himself, and therefore there is no longer a symbol of the world that Bakugou used to look up to. And now Bakugou does not know what to do next. Deku understands his feelings, but the next time he attacks, he punches him in the face. Deku decided not to hold back and fight at full strength. However, Bakugou attacks so fast that Deku doesn't even have time to react. Deku gets up, but Bakugo blinds him and attacks again. It was also revealed that Deku always admired Bakugo, and he inspired Deku even more than All Might did. Deku starts a counterattack, but Bakugo slams him into the ground. It turned out that a sentinel robot was watching the whole battle, which informed Izawa about this. Izawa went outside and met All Might. All Might appeared in Zone B, where he asked the guys to calm down and he also heard their entire conversation. All Might then explained to Bakugo why he chose Deku. Bakugo calls himself a weakling as he regrets that the world will never see All Might again, believing that if he were stronger, he would save him. But the Almighty replied that his time was on the way, and therefore no one's fault. In the end, All Might told him the whole story from beginning to end, and Bakugo promised to keep the secret about strength a secret. Bakugou and Deku are now rivals. Izala also punished the students for breaking the rules. He gave Bakuga four days of house arrest and three days for Deku to clean up. Since the departure of the Almighty, the news of the resignation of the symbol of peace continued to be discussed on TV and to cause confusion in the minds of people. But the second shocking news was that now the prospector will be the new symbol of hope. In parallel with this, 
many groups of villains have become more active, and every day there are more and more of them. The League of Villains, led by Shigaraki, grew at an unprecedented pace. However, they became very selective in their choice of villains, and therefore the Strike Force selected crazy and strong villains. Meanwhile, Principal Nezu held a meeting of the whole school. He spoke about the difficult current situation, which may worsen in the future. Therefore, part-time work by heroes will be introduced according to the type of heroic practice. Now, the main goal of the UE school is to raise worthy heroes in this difficult time. The performance ended with Vlad, who asked to follow the rules of the school, otherwise there will be deductions. In the class, Aizawa gave a lecture and told in more detail about the part-time job. Since this work is outside the jurisdiction of the academy, each student will be responsible for himself. However, the students are at a loss since they could not participate in the festival but simply earn extra money as heroes. Arizawa explained that this festival was for PR so that the hero agencies would notice the students. Also now with a temporary license, students will be able to participate in missions. Meanwhile, Deku and Bakugou are cleaning up. Deku is shocked as he only missed one day and doesn't understand anything about what's going on at the academy. However, due to the punishment, all the students were forbidden from telling Bakuga and Deku about their future internship. It's been three days, Deku is out of house arrest, and now Deku wants to catch up. Aizawa elaborated on the internship. To do this, he invited the three strongest students of the school, who are called the Big Three. Tamaki Amajiki spoke first, but he began to shake and turned away from the class. Nejir Hado took over his presentation, but after that, she began to ask stupid and strange questions to the students. Aizawa then got angry and asked the trio to behave normally. Then Mirio Togata began to speak. He asked a question, but the answer was complete silence. Since no one understands his joke, he invited everyone to fight, all the students together against one Mirio, as he believes that the best way to show the difference between their level of power is through personal experience in battle. As a result, the students changed clothes and met in the training area. Deku decided to attack first, but his attack went through Mirio's body. The rest of the guys also started to attack, but Mirio first knocked out the ranged fighters and then switched to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Deku realized that if Mirio is palpable when attacking, then it is best to catch him on the counterattack. Mirio runs up and goes underground. He appears behind Deku, but Deku reacts quickly and kicks him. However, Mirio slyly uppercuts Deku. Aizawa clarified that Mirio is the first of those who can become the first among the heroes. As a result, Mirio scattered everyone with one blow to the stomach. Mirio's quirk is revealed to be penetration. When he uses his quirk, he becomes weightless. However, when canceling it, the item immediately pushes him back as it violates the laws of physics. But there are enough downsides to his quirk. Under the ground, he cannot breathe, see or hear. This state is comparable to a black hole. He can also use a quirk on a body part and thereby pass through walls. Then Mirio gave a cool and motivational speech. The whole point is that experience turns into strength. Deku immediately realized that Mirio was not naturally strong, but because he developed his skills through training and worked harder than anyone else. Mirio also admitted that Deku is strong enough. That evening, Deku decided to call Gran Torino to inquire about an internship. However, the old man refused him, as he is now busy looking for a league of villains. He sent him to All Might to recommend Deku to his former partners. Meanwhile, the League of Villains met with the head of Overhole, those who have been trusted to be the heirs of evil, and those who have been set free to do evil will soon meet. The news company is preparing a story about the departure of the All Might as the first hero. However, for the plot, the journalists only have a video recording from Kamino, as All Might's friends and colleagues refuse to give additional information. They also have little to no information about All Might's last opponent he fought in Kamino. All they know now is that All Might was partnered with the genius David Shield, and with his help, he got into the spotlight of the whole world, and when he returned to Japan, he founded his own hero agency and became a symbol of the world. The journalist Tanio Tokuda came to the writers. He drew the attention of his colleagues to the phrase, You're next, which was spoken by the Almighty in Kamino. Tanio suggests that this phrase was not for the villains, but for the successor of All Might, which the hero found in the UE school. However, journalists do not yet know who exactly his successor is, but they have inaccurate assumptions. 
In this regard, the editor-in-chief sends Tanio to Yui so that he, under the guise of writing articles about the hero class, finds a successor to All Might, based on which Aizawa warned the students that journalists would come to them. The next day, Tanio arrived in Yui. He got to know all the students and asked them to behave as usual without paying attention to the cameras. Tanio began his search by collecting information, and he was the first to study information about Aoyama. Thus, he looked through all the stories of students, and now he will calculate the successor by the method of elimination. To do this, he took into account the results of the sports festival, where he immediately excluded Bakugo and Todoroki from the list, and after looking at a few more guys, Tanio focused his attention on Deku, since his quirk is somewhat similar to All Might's quirk. He approached Deku and told him that he was an ardent fan of All Might. Since 18 years ago, the hero saved his father from an explosion in an industrial area. And now Tanio is very sorry that All Might recently left his post. After that, he unexpectedly said that he guessed that Deku was All Might's successor, as he felt a connection between them, as well as their quirks are similar. To verify this, the journalist had to study the entire history of the relationship between All Might and Deku, as well as talk to several guys. He puzzled Deku as he didn't know what to say to that. However, Tanio praised Deku and also apologized to him and told him the true reason for coming to Yui. Since he found the successor but he has no proof, he just took a selfie with Deku for his upcoming book, Young Years of the Peace Symbol. After that, Tanio left Yui. He told the editorial staff that he hadn't found a successor, but he did take a photo of the Almighty for their new magazine. Meanwhile, there is a meeting between the League of Villains and Shizaki, also known as the Reclaimer of the Eight Testaments of Death, who is called the Yakuza. Shizaki revealed that he came to the League of Villains not because of All Might's resignation, but because of All for One's loss, since he was the Emperor of the Underworld and now the gangster world was left without a leader but Shigaraki immediately added that he would now be the new head of the gangster world. However, Chizaki had doubts, since Shigaraki does not have a clear plan of action and has already managed to lose several of his team's villains. In contrast, Chizaki has a clear plan that requires a lot of money to implement, but no one wants to allocate such a lot of money to them. Therefore, he wants to use the name of the League of Villains to implement his global plan in which he wants to crush the hero community. However, Shigaraki refused to help him, and Magni decided to destroy Chizaki for his insolence. But Chizaki immediately tore Magni apart with his quirk, as the restorer with the help of his quirk can restore or destroy any substance. Compress then attacked the restorer to imprison him with his quirk. However, Compress was hit by a red bullet and his quirk was disabled, causing Chizaki to injure his arm. Shigaraki, upon seeing the fight, also started attacking Chizaki, and one of the members of the Eight Precepts sacrificed his life to protect their leader. Chizaki offered to stop the massacre as he didn't want to lose the number of villains. Before leaving, Shizaki threw his business card for Shigaraki to think about the proposal, and then the covenant disappeared. However, the League of Villains wants to avenge the loss of their fighters, so Shigaraki will do everything to make sure they pay for their excesses. Meanwhile at school, Yui Aizawa announced to the students that they would now only train at reputable agencies, and there they would do part-time work as pro heroes, as some of the teachers were against any internships. All the students were now wondering where they should go, and the Deco immediately went to call Gran Torino. The old man refused him but he sent Deku to All Might to get through him to the agencies of his former partners. However, All Might also turned Deku down for three reasons. The first reason was that All Might was against student internships outside of school, second, Deku needed more training, and third, All Might didn't want to talk to his former partner Naitai, since Naitai predicted the end of All Might's career with his quirk, and he was right. But Deku continued to persuade his mentor as he needed to become stronger. However, All Might still refused to introduce him to Naitai, because for this he took Mirio, who is now undergoing an internship with Naitai, and will be able to help Deku. At that moment, All Might remembered himself when he first got a job at the school and Principal Nezu immediately suggested that he make Mirio his successor. If the hero had not met Deku then, Mirio would be the successor now. Meanwhile, Deku and Mirio approached Naitai's office, where Muriel warned Deku that Naitai is a very strict person, but if Deku tells good jokes, the eye will most likely be accepted into the agency. Entering the office, 
Deku immediately began to impersonate All Might, but Naitai did not appreciate this joke, as he thought that he was making fun of All Might. Seeing All Might's posters on the wall, Deku realized that Naitai was a big fan of his, so he explained the whole situation to him. However, Naitai did not recognize Deku as All Might's successor, as he thought Mirio should be the successor. Despite this, Naitai offered Deku a one-month contract, but he would accept it if Deku himself stamped the contract. Deku tried to take the seal by all means, and also wanted to understand how Naitai's quirk works. However, time ran out, and instead of receiving the seal, Deku slammed himself into the wall. Naitai noticed that Deku, despite being in a difficult situation by jumping on the walls in every way, never once stepped on All Might's poster. Then the eye realized that the guy can think through his actions. It turned out that even before Deku arrived, Naitai had decided to hire him. In the end, he gave the seal to Deku, and they made a contract. Naitai does this for Mirio, as he doesn't recognize Deku as a hero, and he wants Deku to give up the one for all power in favor of Mirio in the future. In the dorm, the guys are discussing where they will go to train, and Deku is the only one who has been hired so far. Aizaba also explained that it is difficult for all other students to find agencies now, as professionals do not really want to take children to work because it is a very big risk. The next day, Deku and Mirio set to work. They went into surveillance and patrolling, and Naitai went with Bubble Girl. Their goal is to find the Eight Testaments of Death Group and their leader Chizaki with the trademark plague mask, as their gang has become more active lately, and they have recently crossed paths with the League of Villains. But since they have no evidence of their guilt, they cannot arrest them, and therefore they can only watch the bandits. During the patrol, the girl Eri, who ran out of the alley, crashed into Deku, and after her came the chapter of the Eight Precepts of Death, Chizaki the Restorer, with whom Naitai asked not to engage in battle in any case, so as not to destroy their entire plan. Chizaki said that this was his daughter and asked to let her go, but Mirio immediately recognized the ringleader and began to persuade Deku in every possible way to let the girl go and leave. However, Eri asked Deku not to leave her, and she was also very scared. Chizaki excused herself by saying that she was scared, as he scolded her for her disobedience. But Deku saw that Eri was bandaged and realized that something was wrong here. To remove all the suspicions of the heroes, Chizaki invited them to follow him. In the alley, Eri saw Chizaki about to take off his glove. To save the guys, she herself ran to the leader. After that, Deku wanted to attack the villain. But Mirio stopped him, since Deku did not even notice how Chizaki was going to destroy them for this girl. So Deku and Mirio report this to Naitai, that Naitai plans to seek help from other agencies. Meanwhile, Chizaki and Eri went to the base, where Chizaki destroyed his subordinate for missing the girl, and the head was also informed that Shigaraki called to ask to talk. Deku went to All Might to find out what happened to him and Naitai. All Might revealed that he once made Naitai's his partner and the brains of his operations, and they worked like that for five whole years. But after All Might received a wound, Naitai suggested that he end his career and start looking for a successor, because with such wounds he would destroy himself, Naitai saw this as his quirk. However, All Might didn't agree to retire, so they parted ways, as Naitai didn't want to see his friend go to the other world. Now All Might is ashamed that Naitai was still right then, and also there he was offered to make Mirio the successor. But immediately after that, All Might met Deku, and changed his choice. Naitai predicted that he would go to another world in about a year, and All Might thought that the all-for-one fight would be his last however, he found the strength to live for the training of his successor. Meanwhile, Shigaraki and Chizaki met again. The head of the League of Villains said that he was ready to consider Chizaki's offer if they were of equal status. Shigaraki also asked to tell him the whole plan of Chizaki, as well as for what purposes they will use the League of Villains tag. Shigaraki took out a quirk cartridge from his pocket and asked if the whole plan would be connected with it, since after getting into the compress, he could not use his quirk for a while. And Shigaraki wants to know what it is. Shizaki replied that he just wants to restore justice. He said that all for one can control stolen quirks, and Shizaki changed his method a bit and created something new. Meanwhile, Chupa, Amajiki, and Kirishima rounded up the thugs who started a fight. Suddenly, one of the bandits fired a red bullet at Amajiki from the pillar and his quirk was disabled. 
The second bullet flew at Kirishima, but his quirk deflected it. While Chupa and the Amajiki rounded up the bandits, Kirishima went to catch up with the bandit and ended up driving him to a dead end. At first, Kirishima attacked the bandit with little difficulty, but after the villain injected himself with a substance, his quirk increased tenfold. Now even Kirishima's quirk couldn't deflect the bandit's blade. The villain also said that soon the era of heroes will end and everyone will be ruled by bandits. Then Kirishima changed into a new form of an indestructible red rebel. He managed to repel attacks and even break the bandit's blades. The villain, realizing that the effect of the buff would end soon, began to run away, but at the exit he was caught by Fat Gum with his quirk, which absorbs all attacks and accumulates their energy. After the end of the mission, Kirishima told Zhernozhvach everything about the amplifying substances. The next morning, all of the UE trainees went to Naitai's meeting, where many heroes from different agencies were gathered. Naitai immediately spoke about the investigation of the eight precepts, and the heroes are needed to see all the important points of this gang, since they are very active and definitely conceived something unkind. So Naitai's agency requested help through the hero network which is used by all professional heroes. He also talked about two substances that temporarily erase a quirk, as well as those that, on the contrary, temporarily increase the power of a quirk dozens of times. And since Kirishima was able to reflect the bullet, after analyzing it, it became known that the substance inside the bullet is made from human fluid, and it affects the alpha gene. All traces lead to eight testaments, they found out through the captured bandits who worked through intermediaries. Naitai told everyone about the ringleader Chizaki, who makes bullets from his daughter's liquid. Now the task of the heroes is to save the girl Eri, thereby stopping the production of these substances. After the meeting, Gran Torino and Naitai discussed the operation, and Naitai realized that the old man had sent him Deku to reconcile with All Might, and he also noticed how similar Deku and All Might were. A few days passed and the pro heroes under Naitai checked all the suspicious places while Deku and the others continued to train and wait. They were also forbidden to talk about this operation to other students. A couple of days later, late at night, Deku and the others received a message where they were called on a case. By this time, Naitai and the others realized that Eri was in the mansion of the Chapter of the Eight Testaments, and they learned this through one of the gang members, whom Naitai met while he was buying a toy in a store. Naitai used a quirk on him and saw where Eri was. Meanwhile, at the Eight Testaments mansion, someone informed the bandits that the heroes were going to attack the mansion. Shizaki ordered the guys to work according to the plan, and he went to see his father, who was in a coma, in which Shizaki himself sent him. The operation began at 8 a.m. According to Naitai's prediction, the path to the room where Eri is located became known to everyone. Also, the heroes were given all the information about the bandits and their quirks. Deku noticed that Gran Torino was not among the heroes, to which Naitai replied that he was busy with other important business along with Chukauchi, who had learned something about the League of Villains. At 8.30 in the morning, the heroes were already near the mansion. During this time, Chisaki began to leave the mansion by underground routes along with Krono and Eri. When the heroes were about to break in, Rikia flew out of the gate, the dragon Ryuko began to fight with him, and the rest of the heroes and the police went inside the mansion, capturing the gang members along the way. The heroes reached a secret passage down under the building, and Naitai opened the passage from the bandits' memory. Bubbly Girl and Centipede took over the first wave of bandits. Suddenly, a mimic appeared, who, with the help of his quirk of mimicry, can penetrate and control inanimate objects. However, Mirio decided not to waste time, and with the help of his quirk, continued on his way to Eri, and Nimic threw everyone else to the floor below, where three bandits were waiting for the guys whom Amajiki decided to attack. He with great difficulty destroyed the bandits using his quirk and turning into everything he ate. However, due to his injuries, he could barely stand on his feet. After that, Mimic decided to attack Aizawa, since he is the only one who can defeat him if he sees his real body. However, Fat Gum and Kirishima protected Aizawa with their bodies. Then Mimic threw them into a room where Rap's Fiery Fist and Hakiji Tengai, who can create protective barriers, were. Rappa started attacking the heroes with frantic force with his blows. Even the Red Rebel form could not withstand these blows. As a result, Kirishima received serious injuries on his hands. Realizing this, Zhernoshvach began to take all the blows on himself. 
It turned out that Rappa did not pursue the goal of destroying the heroes, he wanted to fight them, so he asked Tenge not to put his shields on him. As Kirishima struggled with himself and endured the pain, Chupip continued to take hits and build up energy. According to his plan, he wants to attack the villain with all the accumulated energy. However, Fat Chu didn't have time to prepare all his strength, and suddenly Kirishima came to his defense, who perked up and became stronger, and thanks to the time gained, Fat Chu prepared all the accumulated energy and slammed the villains into the wall with one blow, because of which Fat Chu lost about 60% of their weight. However, after a powerful blow, Rappa managed to get to his feet, so this is not the end of the battle. But the guys no longer had the strength to fight him, and suddenly Rappa advised to go to the first aid post where Kirishima could be treated. Tengai called Rappa a monster idiot, causing him to lie flat on the ground. Rappa did all this in order to continue the fight with the guys in the future. Fat Chu bandaged Kirishima. He tied up Tengai, and Rappa's hands were injured. Rappa also let slip that Chisuke was going to start distributing the substance around the world, and for this he needed money. Meanwhile, Mimic realized that his buff would soon end, and he decided to attack all the heroes at the same time. However, the dancer Ken Takagi, also known as Rock Lock, came to the rescue and used his locking quirk to block the movement of the walls near the heroes. Mimic responded by dividing the heroes among themselves with walls. Suddenly, Rock Lock was attacked from behind by Toga, who was able to wound him in the side. When Aizawa and Deku breached the wall, Toga transformed into Rock Lock. However, Aizawa realized that it was a trap and turned off Toga's quirk. Then she immediately began to attack Deku, but Aizawa managed to twist her with his ribbons. However, she injured his shoulder and then jumped away and Mimic covered her with a wall. Meanwhile, twice and his created clone, Rappa stood in the way of Naitai and the others. But Naitai with a couple of blows smashed twice and his clones without any problems and also tore his mask with one seal. Mimic then separated twice with a wall, where he became hysterical because of the torn mask. But Toga appeared and rolled up the open part. It turned out that during the conversation between Shigaraki and Shizaki, the leader of the eight precepts wanted to know Shigaraki's plan. A couple of days before, at the League of Villains headquarters, Shigaraki informed his villains that their goal was to join the Covenants, as their plan was beneficial to the League. But Shigaraki's behavior became incomprehensible to the villain. Then he explained everything by the fact that they would do it for him and for everyone, since the Covenants want to lure the best from the League to their side and throw the League of Villains from the top. Therefore, the task of Tova and Twice is to get close to the throats of the Covenants and make a commotion. In this connection, Toga and Twice began to piss off Mimic, and they succeeded. The Mimic went berserk and began to change the corridors thereby throwing off the villains and heroes to the lower floors in order to fill them up there. While Mimic was in a frenzy, Deku, hearing a scream, realized where his body was, so he attacked him. Upon seeing the real Mimic, Aizawa turned off his quirk. Meanwhile, Mirio overtook Chizaki, but Deidoro appeared, who with his quirk makes people lose their balance, and Shin, who through his confession, found out everything about Mirio's quirk and began to attack him. However, Mirio easily dealt with the villains and headed towards Chizaki. First of all, he attacked the leader, but he dodged. Then he decided to attack Chrono, and thus freed Eri, who immediately asked Mirio to leave, because Chizaki could destroy him. However, Mirio does not intend to back down, and Chizaki is not afraid to hurt his daughter, since he can restore her at any time. Then Chizaki blocked all the passages so that Mirio could not get out with Eri. Chrono came to his senses and started attacking Mirio. However, Mirio first hit the Restorer, and then Chrono. Shin came to his senses, but because Chizaki threw him a modified cartridge, which permanently disables the quirk, Shin immediately took the hint and attacked Eri so that Mirio would protect her with his body, since Mirio himself, due to his quirk, could not be hit. Mirio managed to save the girl at the cost of his quirk. However, Mirio didn't give up, and he attacked Chrono to distract Chizaki and then punched him in the arm. Since Mirio has the highest physical form, even without a quirk, he continued to humiliate Chizaki and dodge his attacks, but he still missed a couple of blows. Suddenly, Deku, Aizawa, and Naitai appeared from the wall. Deku immediately knocked Restorer back with a blow. Aizawa disabled his quirk, 
and Naitai went to Mirio and Eri. Deku and Aizawa decided to destroy Chizaki, but Kurono suddenly became active and injured Aizawa's hand with his quirk. His quirk is time dilation, and whoever touches his arrow, time begins to pass very slowly. At the moment when Mirio threw Kromo at Chizaki, he revived him, and since the startled Aizawa closed his eyes, Chizaki's quirk returned to him, and he immediately attacked everyone. He then pulled Shin to him and devoured him, while admitting that Mirio was stronger. However, all the efforts of the hero were in vain, as he is now a hero without a quirk. As a result, Shisaki took on a perfect form and decided to attack Naitai's and the guys, but they were protected by Deku. Naitai then asked Deku to look after Mirio and Eri, while he himself began to fight Shizaki. Naitai used his quirk to read Shizaki's actions for a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, Kurono took Aizawa downstairs to the waiting room. It turned out that they needed Aizawa alive, since his quirk was the ideological basis for studying Eri's quirk. Deku broke the wall and started leading Mirio and Eri out of the underground tunnel. Chisaki managed to destroy Naitai as he deliberately turned off his quirk. In this regard, Deku left Eri and Mirio, who was barely on his feet, and he concentrated all his strength in himself so that Chisaki did not have time to recover. However, Chisaki was able to dodge and Deku only injured his right arms, which he later recovered and in turn injured his arm and leg. Chizaki used Shin's absorbed quirk to speak to Eri. He told her that if she did not return to him, then no one would leave here alive, and if she came, he would return everything as it was. But Deku intervened, who was not satisfied with the conditions, and he intends to save Eri and the others. Meanwhile, on the surface, after the capture of the villain Rikia, a pre-injected substance begins to act on him, and he becomes ten times stronger. Ryuko and Ejir immediately begin to fight him. However, due to the gain, the villain begins to absorb the energy of those around him. Unexpectedly, Deku arrived, who came for help, saying that their target was around the corner. In this regard, Uraraku makes Riki a weightless, and Asui picks up the villain with his tongue, while Riko holds him, and Nejir imprints the villain into the ground with his energy spirals, because of which they break through the ceiling right above Deku and the guys. It turned out that under the guise of Deku was Toga. She lured the heroes to the place where Eri is, but they themselves got out of the ground with the help of a copy of the compress and his quirk. Now they plan to capture Eri again with the help of a copy of the compress, so they sent the copy down. The restorer and the heroes immediately exposed compress. Chizaki then began to lift the ground so that neither Deku nor compress could reach Eri. However, Deku turned on his full power and jumped towards Eri, who began to emit yellow lightning. Since realizing that the guys will not give up, she decided to help them save themselves. It turns out that her quirk is reversal of time, so she immediately rolled Chizaki back to her normal form and jumped towards Deku. Deku caught her, but Chizaki immediately began to attack them, and realizing that they could not dodge, Deku performed a blow, which caused him to destroy everything around him. Then Deku realized that he used his quirk 100%, but his limbs did not break from this, and he realized that it was Eri who helped him. Chizaki got angry and devoured Rikia and turned into a giant multi-armed monster. He climbed out of the hole and said that Eri couldn't control her quirk and Deku was lucky that she used her quirk during his kick. If the Deku continues to hold her, then she will roll back his time to the time of the monkeys, and Eri does not know how to stop, so only the Restorer can stop her. Deku had an insight that if Eri could turn back time, then he decided to use his power to the fullest and sent Chizaki flying with a powerful blow. Chizaki remembered moments from the past with his father. He suggested to his father that he allow him to distribute two substances that take away quirks and which enhances them. At first, he plans to run a trial version and then release the finished product, which they will sell for a lot of money. They will also be able to sell the antidote, and in this way, they will be able to completely control the world. Since they will be able to remove or restore quirks, it will even be possible to return the world to the moment when there were no quirks. And the key to all this is Eri's liquid. However, his father did not allow Chizaki to do this, since Eri is a living person, not an object. Then Chizaki sent his father into a coma, but in the future he plans to return him to normal, but only after the implementation of the plan. In flight, Shizaki rebuilt his body to destroy this world. However, 
Deku sent Shizaki to sleep with one powerful blow. Naitai still survived and was shocked as he saw the future where Shizaki left and Deku was defeated, and Naitai realized that the future could be changed. Meanwhile, Amajiki freed Aizawa from Chrono, and he also picked up Mirio. On the battlefield, Iri's quirk became much stronger, and Shizaki also came into his own again and decided to crush Deku. But when his hand touched Eri, time rolled back and Shizaki separated from Rikia. Ruraraku grabbed the reclaimer mid-flight and reported the situation to everyone else. At this time, Eri remembered Chisuke's words and thought about how to stop her. Aizawa suddenly came to his senses and turned off Eri's quirk, thus saving Deku from turning into a monkey. The heroes and the police began to gather the wounded and chain the defeated villains to the bed, while Tolga and Twice were able to get away. The car was carrying a chained Chizaki, and also carrying both types of substances. This car was attacked by a league of villains sent by Toga and Twice. The sand hero Seijin Higawara came to the car's defense, but he was easily dealt with by Dabi with his fire and Compress with his quirk. The villains pulled Chizaki out and showed him that they were now the new owners of the substances, and they also stripped him of his arms and therefore his quirks. The left hand was taken by Compress, and the right hand was incinerated by Shigaraki. He, as promised, humiliated and deprived the power of the Restorer, after which either the villains disappeared. Meanwhile, all the injured heroes were taken to the hospital, and Deku was not injured at all. Aizawa led Deku to All Might and Naitai. It turned out that Naitai could not be restored even with the help of a healing grandmother. In this connection, Naitai told All Might that he just wanted to change the future and save his idol. Naitai also realized today that energy changes the future. Several heroes prove this by example. Also, there is a bandaged Mirio, who does not want Naitai to go to another world, since Mirio has become so strong thanks to his training. Naitai, using his quirk, saw that Mirio would do well and become an unparalleled hero, and he asked him not to try to change his future. After that, everyone began to cry and Naitai went to another world. Bakugu and Todoroki, on their way to retake their license, met Meika and All Might, who will be accompanying them instead of Aizawa, who is now looking after Mirio. Before leaving, Gran Torino informs All Might that they figured out where Kurojiri is, so they twisted him. But out of nowhere, one of all for one's most loyal subordinates, the monster villain Gigantomachi, appeared. He attacked the heroes and the police, and Gran Torino barely managed to fly out of there along with Kurojiri and Shikachi. When they returned with help, the villain was nowhere to be found. Upon arrival, All Might meets Prospector, who has come to oversee his son's retake, and also talk to All Might. At the same time, Todoroki and Bakugo met Yoreshi along with Kami and Shishikura. They are being watched by Kasaka and Mera, who will test the guys. A group of students on the retake will need to find a common language with the children and change their behavior for the better. Bakugo offered to have a duel with him to determine the leader among them. Yorashi tried to find an approach to children by learning their character, but he did not succeed. Kami and Todoroki also tried to negotiate with the children, but nothing came of it, and the children staged a rout with their quirks. Meanwhile, Prospector and All Might started a conversation while watching the test. The Prospector does not understand what it means to be a symbol of the world and what to do. The Almighty advised him to find his own path and it is not necessary to follow his path, since they are different. The students realized that it is not so important for children who to attack, and therefore the battle of generations began. During this fight, the guys came up with a plan where they will try to show the children their quirks, as well as something unique, so that the children want to repeat it. Then Kami created her quirk of the Northern Lights. Todoroki froze all the children's devices and created an ice slide with fiery illumination and Yorashi cheered up with his breeze, and even Bakugo was able to motivate the leader guy. The guys realize that they just need to rise in the eyes of the children so that they show respect for them. Then Kasatka admitted that the guys passed this test. It was also because of this performance that the prospector realized that to be a symbol is to be a contagious example. At the exit of the building, the guys met Shishikuru and the heroes, who were discussing the case of Toga, when she reincarnated as Kami. The prospector approached Todoroki and said that he was proud of his son and he would definitely become a hero that Todoroki could be proud of. With this gesture, we were shown that the prospector had changed. October came, during which time Naitai's funeral took place. 
His agency will now be run by his deputy centipede. Eri also regained consciousness during this time, but her emotional state was not stable, so she was forbidden to visit, and her horn on her head decreased. The students have started to prepare their performance for the cultural festival arc to be held in Yui. Aizawa gave his class a task to come up with a topic for the speech. As a result of several series of Jiro's musical and vocal talent, the guys chose a musical dance number. The next day, Deku and Mirio visited Eri and brought her fruit. It turned out that Eri herself asked to meet the guys. This was her first request after she woke up. However, they decided not to tell Eri about Naitai, and Eri also apologized for Mirio losing his quirk because of her. But for Mirio, this is not so important. The main thing is that Eri is in order. It was also revealed that Eri couldn't smile, so Deku decided to surprise her and show her the festival. He asked Aizawa to help with it. However, the teacher needs to coordinate this with the principal. Meanwhile, the police began to freshen up the YouTube channel, on which the villain Generous and La Brava post videos of their robberies. Magnanimous considers himself a local Robin Hood. He does not commit ordinary robberies, but he punishes stores for expired goods. However, his goal is to do something global and record his name in history. Magnanimous has been blogging for six years, and La Brava is editing. However, Stain's recent appearance on the network has taken away his entire audience, and the League of Villains is gaining popularity quite well. Now Magnanimous wants to gain popularity at the cultural festival. At this time, the students are preparing for the festival, and they are also drinking tea that Yoyuros bought in a small restaurant that we need to remember. The guys also plan to add various special effects to their performance in the form of their quirks, and they have already managed to distribute duties on stage. After that, Deku met with All Might and told him that he could already use 20% of the power, but for 100% he was not ready yet, so he was stumped. All Might recommended that he develop a long-range attack, and the hero had already thought of everything. When Deku changed his clothes, All Might asked him to use 20% of his strength and direct the blow in any direction, thus Deku got a blow with compressed air. Meanwhile, Mirio, Eri, and Aizawa arrived at Yui as the director had agreed for Eri to attend the festival. So that she would not panic, they decided to bring Eri in advance and introduce her to the school, because there is still a whole month to prepare. Meanwhile, Clasp is preparing a performance made up of various dramas. There will also be a beauty contest at the festival, where beautiful ladies have already signed up. Deku and Mirio gave Eri a tour of the Yui. When they were done, they went to the dining room, where they met Principal Nezu and Midnight. From their words, they learned that the police were against the festival because of the turbulent situation, but the director managed to convince them. But to avoid misunderstandings, guards were posted in the form of a watchdog hero. A week passed, Deku was fired from the dancers and transferred to the special effects team. And in the mornings, he also continued to train with All Might. Also there, he accidentally met Mei, who promised him to make new special gloves. All Might reported that he also used various attachments for training, but they were too bulky, and so he stopped using his true form. Deku, on the other hand, decided to look for such devices, but instead he came across a video of the Magnanimous, where he talked about his affairs through a tea review. Meanwhile, Magnanimous and La Bravo work out a plan to get into the school. First, they will go along the alleys then along the park, and after that the generous one should look into a small tea room and drink the same tea there. In his opinion, this tea is ideal for the job they want to do, and after that they will again reach the mountain through the alleys and already get to the school, and so that the hound dog does not find them by smell. They will have to smear themselves with mud. Also, La Brava will have to get into the UE network and disable their defense system. The day before the start of the festival, the guys hold a dress rehearsal, where during the check it turned out that the rope on which the deck will hang Ayama has deteriorated, and since Yayorozu is already sleeping, Deku will have to go to the store in the morning for a new rope. The store itself is located near the place where Generous and La Brava will have tea. The next day, at 6.30, Deku goes to train with All Might. Mai also arrives and hands Deku his new ranged gloves, and having already tried them, Deku goes to the store at 7.50 to get the rope, and when Deku returns with his purchase, he stumbles upon Gentle and La Brava in disguise, who were just leaving the tea room where they drank the same tea. 
Deku, upon hearing the name of the tea, remembered that it was Yoyorozu who prepared it for them. In turn, the magnanimous, hearing Deku's thoughts, decided to find out how he knew about this cool tea. Deku replied that he had tried it at a friend's. From this conversation, Generous realized that Deku was from Yui, and Deku recognized the voice of Generous from the video. Then Deku decided to prevent the villain from getting to Yui and disrupting the festival. Then Magnanimous and La Brava took out a camera and started filming. It turned out that the quirk of the Magnanimous can make everything elastic even air. Then he pushed Deku away with his quirk, and they ran towards Yui. However, Deku went after them. It was also revealed that La Brava recognized Deku from seeing him at a sports festival. Deku used a long-range attack on the villains, thereby slamming them into the building. To delay Deku, Magnanimous threw a steel beam on him, and using his quirk, he flew towards Yui. Deku, realizing that if the villains are discovered and the signal sounds, the festival will be cancelled. Then he freed himself and went after them. Deku took advantage of the already left air membranes that Magnanimous and La Bravo were moving on and Deku was able to catch up with the villains with his covering and capture them. We are shown the story of La Brava, from which it became clear that she is in love with the Magnanimous, and she is already over 20 years old, and her quirk is called Love. When she confesses her love to someone, she gives a powerful boost of energy. In this connection, the Magnanimous freed himself with renewed vigor and slammed Deku into the ground, and also crushed him with a bunch of layers of air. But Deku, as if Naruto had made a tunnel, and getting out asked why the Magnanimous was doing all this. Then we were shown his past, from which it became clear that the Magnanimous simply dreams of glory in order to get into history for posterity. But because of one case when he wanted to help, but in the end did harm, he became a criminal. However, he looks more like a blogger than a villain, as his goal is simply to become popular. And since he was not accepted as a hero, he had no other option but to become a criminal. He also does this for La Brava, as this is their common goal. As a result, Deku and Magnanimous began to fight. However, Deku, after hearing the story of the Magnanimous, changed his attitude towards him and began to respect him. Although before that he considered the Magnanimous to be a weak opponent, Deku realized that they are similar to him, since his goal, too, has already gone beyond his personal one, and has become a ray of hope for those who do not see a brighter future. And since there are people who recognized him, he wants to live up to their expectations. After some nice dialogue, Magnanimous threw the sounding board against a tree, and La Brava ran closer to Yui to catch the signal and start disabling the defense system. Deku tried to stop her, but the Magnanimous stood in his way, and they continued to fight. It turns out that Magnanimous has also changed his attitude towards Deku, and now he fights for the honor of a hero like Deku. However, Deku used a ranged attack and slammed the Magnanimous into the ground. At this time, La Brava saw Watchdog and Ectoplasm approaching and decided to return to the Magnanimous and warn him. But she saw that Deku had already won. Then La Brava attacks Deku with powerful blows, saying that the Magnanimous is the person for whom she lives. The Magnanimous understood that through his fault La Brava could also be imprisoned. Due to La Brava's emotions, the Magnanimous temporarily regained strength, and he pushed Deku back a couple of tens of meters. Heroes appeared, and the Magnanimous decided to give up, and also to expose everything so as not to involve La Brava in this matter. But the dog smelled that Disciple Yui was still here. Then the dog began to ask where he was, and then Deku himself appeared. The Magnanimous is happy, because it was a hero like Deku who dealt him a decisive blow. It turned out that the Magnanimous had once studied at the Heroic Faculty, but since that time only a Heroic Shadow remained. However, he believes that Deku will be a real hero and make a truly bright future. After this beautiful speech, the dog took the Magnanimous and La Brava to the police station. In the meantime, the festival is already in full swing, and the A-Class performance will be at 10 o'clock sharp. Therefore, for a start, Deku, under the supervision of Ectoplasm, ran after the abandoned rope. Deku arrived at the appointed time, as did Mirio and Eri. Bakugou caused an explosion with his quirk, and the performance began, where they played the opening of My Hero Academia. The performance went great, even Eri had a smile on her face. After that, a beauty contest began, where several beauties of the Academy performed. Ultimately, Najiro won. The end of November is coming. 
By this time, they decided to transfer Eri to Yui, since her parents abandoned her, and the only relative of the Yakuza boss is in a coma. Since she has nowhere to go, she will live with the teachers. It is also necessary to look after the power of Eri, and Mirio will help in. Meanwhile, Wildcats have arrived in Yui to work again. They also received a message from Tartarus, where All for One is being held, and they tried to get Ragdoll's quirk back, but because of the danger, All for One decided to keep him on a leash. The cats also started talking about ranks and said that twice a year they count the points of heroes and make a list of top heroes. Points are counted by the number of cases solved, the level of assistance to the community, and the percentage of people's support. Accordingly, the higher the place, the more useful the hero. This year, only the first results have been summed up so far, and soon the second results will have to be published without the participation of the Almighty. During the announcement of the results, the heroes will go up to the stage, where the prospector takes the first place. After the award, the Endeavor was approached by Hawk, who was on the list of the top 10 heroes, and said that he was never a fan of All Might, but his resignation came as a shock to the bird, and now he wants the Prospector to be an icon just like All Might. Also, Hawk wanted to team up with the Prospectors, as there were strange cases in his hometown, and it was rumored to be Nomu. Meanwhile, Dabi, whose voice everyone listens to Nomu, he sent a high-class Nomu into battle. Prospector and Hawk went to dinner at a cafe, where the bird said that he had conducted his own investigation and found out that there were a lot of rumors about Nomu, but he did not find the Nomu themselves. Therefore, the Hawk wants the Prospector to reassure the inhabitants of the country and say that these Nomu are just rumors. The bird wants to make a trusted leader out of the Prospector. However, they are suddenly attacked by the same high-class Nomu and asks who is the strongest here. Prospector will fight Nomu and he left the evacuation of people to the Hawk. However, before the fight begins, we move on to the Prospector's family to reveal a little about his personality. Fuyumi and Nachio's older children came to visit Ri's mother, or the Prospector's wife, who was overjoyed that Shota was finally writing letters to her. Natsuo then reminded the family that Prospector's father was officially number one, but people don't know how bad he is or what he did to them. It turns out that 10 years have passed and Natsuo now considers him an outsider. But since the Prospector is not currently on television, Natsuo thinks that the Prospector is trying to renounce the past. However, Rei said that this was not true, since the Prospector came to her and brought flowers that she likes, and he remembered the look of the flowers from the first meeting, since she only talked about it once. She also thinks that he most likely came many times, but she did not see him, as she is still afraid of him but she understands for sure that he does not want to forget his family and the past, and he wants to fix everything. Meanwhile, Prospector damaged Noma with his first attack, but he immediately recovered. Because of this, the Prospector realized that only Dark Nomu have the power of restoration, since Light Ones cannot regenerate. The Prospector also realized that this Nomu is special, as he can speak. Then the Prospector attacks Nomu with a powerful flame but he responds by slamming the Prospector into the building, and then cuts the building with his lengthening limb with a quirk. In this regard, the Hawk launches its indestructible feathers in order to have time to evacuate people. However, he doesn't have enough feathers to get all the people out of the building, so he decides to start with the people in the danger zone. With his quirk, the Hawk can control each of his feathers, and as a result, he was able to immediately evacuate 76 people. To prevent the building from falling on people, the Prospector cut the upper part of the building into small pieces with his attack. However, immediately after that, the Nomu began to unleash the other Nomu, and the Hawk decided that while the Prospector would fight the main Nomu, he would take on all the others. However, the bird is not particularly strong against strong enemies, so its main purpose is to support the Prospector, who at that time began to overheat his body, due to which he began to become slower. Therefore, the Prospector remembered that Nomu was looking for the strongest, and in order to focus his attention on himself, the hero said he began to provoke Nomu with words, thereby the Prospector for the sake of the family is going to incinerate Nomu with one attack. He attacks him sharply with full incineration, however, Nomu detaches his head so as not to burn out completely, and in this way he is fully restored, and after a counterattack, wounds the Prospector in several places. As the Miner tries to get back on his feet, the whole world continues to watch their clash. The Prospector comes to his senses and attacks Nomu again, but he overtakes him in speed and imprints a blow into the building. 
and as the prospector regains his senses, Nomu targets the people, who begin to scream in panic that this is all because they do not have a peace symbol. However, there was a young Itadori in the crowd who started yelling for everyone to stop talking nonsense. Because they still have a prospector whose fire has not yet been extinguished, he is still fighting. The prospector rises again and starts chasing Nomu, but cannot catch up with him in terms of speed. He also reports that the pain keeps him awake and makes him stronger. A hawk comes to the rescue, which with its feathers increases the speed of the prospector. When the hero overtakes Nomu, he begins to behave like an animal and bites the prospector. But the hero grabs Nomu and starts lifting him up so that his attack does not harm people, as the prospector wants to use all his strength. The prospector uses the most powerful technique and completely burns Nomu, thereby winning. The hero lands on the ground and raises his hand in the same way as the All Might did. Thus, the prospector laid the foundation for a new symbol of peace. At night, in a dream, Deku saw all the previous avatars one for all. When he touched his hand with the first wielder of this power, Deku shattered the window with his quirk and shock. In Yui, there are heated discussions about the recent fight between the prospector and the hawk against the strongest Nomu, where the prospector paid tribute to the All Might after the victory. Aizawa came to the class and reminded everyone that the students now have temporary licenses in their hands, and they must behave within this framework. Suddenly, an alarm sounded, and it turned out that this training session of classes to save people from the clutches of villains. Then the disciples quickly threw on the heroic garb and went to work on the rescue. Some engaged in reconnaissance and found out that there was a victim who had been carried away by the river. There is also a place where there was an explosion, and now there is a fire. In this connection, Asui and Minoru took care of the victims on the river, but it turned out that Mirio played this role. As a result, Mirio was saved by the efforts of many participants. The rest of the guys assembled a wagon, where Aida acted as horsepower, and they called themselves the Mobile Fire Brigade, which arrived at the scene. The rest went to the place of the fire. Bakugu, Kaminari, Kirishima went on a convertible in search of villains. Meanwhile, Todoroki froze the fire on the spot. But Najero appeared and there was an even bigger explosion, the consequences of which stopped Ashido and Aoyama. However, Najero captured Ashida and a second villain, played by Amajiki, also appeared. Also, Mirio again deliberately fell into the river and distracted five students. Then with the help of Yuraraka, who cancelled Ashide's gravity, and then Yairozu with the newly created cannon, Najero was caught in the net. Meanwhile, Tailman and Tentacle Man began a fight which Deku joined in. But since this is just a game, he did not attack Amajiki, for which he received a powerful lesson in the body, since pity leads to destruction. But a detachment of the search for villains arrived, and as a result, the bandits were defeated. However, Bakugu was unhappy that everything was so easy, and since the big three were being served, but Kugo decided to punish them with a powerful explosion. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Endeavor reminisces about the moment after Nomu's defeat. There, the hawk and the prospector were overtaken by Dabi, who said that he had come to pick up Nomu and talk with the prospector. However, the conversation went wrong, and Dabi decided to destroy the strongest heroes. But suddenly, a female minotaur appeared and stood between them. In this connection, Dabi will definitely return to talk later. Then Dabi fooled. Then the heroes thought that Dabi's appearance had something to do with Kamino. However, Prospector doubts this, saying that it was only the beginning. After the fight with Nomu, Hawk and Dabi met again. It turned out that this whole attack situation was a test of Nomu's strength, and Dabi was unhappy that the Hawk was brought to the test instead of the random hero Prospector. However, the Hawk does not see this as his fault, since the strongest hero received serious wounds after the battle with Nomu and accordingly he did not violate their agreement. Then Dabi was again not happy that no one died. Hawk explained this by saying that since he is the number two hero, he needs to be trusted and he must live up to his status. However, Dabi still refused to let the Hawk to the head of the League of Villains, and they will keep their distance for now. It turned out that the Hawk was specially sent by the Heroic State Commission so that he entered into the confidence of the villains, so that through him they would receive more information about the League and especially about Noma, and this is how they plan to defeat the villains. The Hawk itself will have to turn a blind eye to the excesses that the villains will do in order not to give themselves away. A couple of days later, 
the hawk came to the discharge of Prospector, to whom the doctor saved his left eye. On the way, the prospector asked the hawk what he thought about the fact that when they appeared in Kos, and they were immediately attacked by Nomu, and this is very strange. Hawk argued that the two best heroes are attracting a lot of attention, and now any information about Nomu can be a trap for the heroes. When the prospector reached the house, he was met by his family. However, Natsuo had not yet forgiven his father for his sick childhood, and therefore went outside. In the news story, they began to show people's opinions about the fight between Prospector and Nomu. There were many different opinions, but it turned out that the Prospector was able to motivate many people with his example. Afterwards, Shoudo said that he couldn't forgive him either, but he still wanted to see how his father would change. Meanwhile, Deku was tired from his endless daily training, so he went to bed. He had a dream where all the previous one-for-all avatars were, and Deku realized that he had already seen them at the UE Sports Festival, and in fact, Deku became the ninth owner of the power. He was shown a fragment of memories where All for One is talking with his younger quirkless brother, who was the very first owner of the one-for-all power, and there Deku also recognized the voice of All for One. After that, the older brother showed the younger how, with the help of his power, he can change people's lives and make them his assistants, and thus he plans to change the whole world. But the younger was against this, because the elder's methods went beyond what was permitted. However, despite this, the elder brother loved the younger, and therefore, even against his consent, he transferred to him the quirk of accumulating power. After that, one for all began to talk with Deku. He said that he wanted to show more, but for now he can't do it, because Deku barely got to 20% of the strength of one for all. He also said that Deku has now passed the point of singularity, and he should now understand that he is not alone. When Deku woke up, he saw the one for all coding on his working arm, and he began to think that his power was getting out of control. After that, Deku could not sleep, and therefore he ran all night. In the morning, Deku told his dream to All Might. Then All Might said that his teacher Nanashimura said that one for all is not just a fad, but also a memory card, where in addition to the accumulated power, the data of previous avatars is stored. But for the one for all to talk to Deku, this is the first time, and it turns out that the quirk is evolving. Deku theorized that this is due to the increase in the power of the quirk, which can grow to a size that cannot be controlled, and then the wearer will come to an end. However, all Might reassured Deku and said that he didn't know how to help him, but he was sure that Deku's quirk was on his side and he should continue to study it. Deku then went to the combat training where classes A and B would participate and also decided to join Shinsa, who would be the 41st members. Since the competition will be between teams of four, Shinsa will compete once for a random class A and class B team. They split into teams, with Shinsa being on the team against Deku, which is good for Deku himself, as he wants to test if Shinsa's quirk is related to the silhouettes of the avatars he saw at the festival. Vlad told the rules, where teams will have to push their opponents into a cage at their base in 20 minutes. Whoever sharpens all opponents first or scores more points, that team will win. Midnight and the Almighty came to watch. The first fight begins, where Class A decided to start by attacking Shiozaki, which Kuji discovered with his birds nearby. However, they were suddenly attacked by the Shishida Beast, as it tracked them down with its flawless sniffing apparatus. It slammed Azui and Kirishima into the wall, while Tsuburaba was sitting on the back of the beast, who immediately threw Kauji into an air prison. However, Shinsa stepped in and took control of the beast. Prior to the fight, Shinsa explained to his team how his quirk works. It turned out that he just needs to choose a target, and when this person answers him, a quirk will work, and already this person will follow the instructions of Shins under control, and the curse can be removed with an ordinary shock. In the battle, Tsuburaba threw the Shinsa into an air prison, and began to bring the beast to life. When the beast woke up, it immediately grabbed Kaminari, who retaliated by attacking him with a bolt of lightning. Taking advantage of this moment, Asui, waking up, grabbed Tsuburaba with her tongue and headed towards the cage. But the beast came again, and in response threw Kirishima towards Chiyozaki, who twisted him with grass and sent him to a cage. Also, the beast was able to imprison Kivji, who was in his hands in a cage. In response, Asui imprisoned Tsuburaba. The team realized that the beast calculates them by smell, and therefore decided to confuse him and Asui smeared everyone with her mucus. 
It also turned out that Kaminari had left one of his electricity markers on the beast, and they used it to track it down. Because of this, the beast, sensing the approach of three Aswi at once, realized that the opponents played on its weakness. However, he was still able to determine their location, and Shiyozaki sent her grass there, thereby grabbing Kaminari, who was specially sent first to try to stun everyone through his pointer. However, Rin reacted and threw away the pointers, because Kaminari did not get hit by the discharge. This diversion allowed Shinsa to imitate Rin's voice, and he was able to take control of Shiyozaki, who was immediately grabbed by Azui and also attacked Rin. Meanwhile, the beast went towards Shins, but he attacked him. However, the beast was able to stand on its feet, then Azui put the beast to sleep with one blow. As a result, Klasa comes out victorious in this difficult battle. After that, everyone made a conclusion for themselves in which direction to move on and then they announced the start of the second duel of Class A against Class B. At the start of the fight, Yoyorozu asked Tokoyami to reconnoiter with her shadow, and he immediately spotted Class B. However, his shadow captured Kuruwaro with his shadow walking quirk and started attacking Class A with it. When they were able to release the shadow by refraction of the invisible light, Kuruwaro grabbed Oriyama and began to carry him through the pipes. But Tokoyami joined in, who, in practice with a hawk, learned to fly with the help of his shadow. He called this technique a powerful dark fallen sparrow. As a result, Tokoyami was able to grab Aoyama. After that, they attacked the pipes with a laser, and in doing so, they were able to take away the shadow of Kuroiro and surrounded him. However, the mushrooms that Komori created suddenly appeared everywhere. It turned out that everything that happened before was part of Kendo's plan and now classed with the help of Komori and Mangaman will attack Class A from a distance to separate them. Mangaman can materialize sounds and sound effects from comics with his quirk, and he created giant phrases and divided the guys among themselves. Then Kendo started attacking Yoyorozu. She plans to wear down the opponent, thereby winning. But it turns out that Yoyorozu read this a long time ago, in connection with which she created a big cannon and sent a bag of gifts over the wall. She also glued herself to the cannon before passing out, and then glued Kendo to it so that she couldn't move. Meanwhile, Kuroiro was able to snatch Aoyama from Tokoyami's grasp and sent her to jail. Then Tokoyami found the invisible man completely covered with mushrooms, and they saw a bag of Yoyorosa, in which there were thermal imaging goggles, alcohol, and much more. In this connection, Tokoyami put on glasses and they rubbed themselves with alcohol, so that mushrooms would not appear on them. Invisible went to Manga and started attacking him. However, Kendo unexpectedly appeared with a sleeping Yayarosa, she blocked the invisibility. Meanwhile, Tokoyami overtook Kuroiro and Komori. He blocked Kuroiro with his cloak, and Komori was twisted by a shadow. But it turned out that Komori used a mushroom, from which Tokoyami began to choke, and he could not continue the fight. As a result, Class Bu won, imprisoning Class A in a cage. Before the next fight, All Might told Deku that he would fight Shinsa in the fifth match, which may have caused the remnants of one for all to awaken. In the third duel, Tetsu Tetsu began to smash everything that was nearby, and Todoroki began with a powerful ice attack. In response, Juzo changed all plans with his quirk of softening any inanimate object, and Steel began to fight with Todoroki, and the Kaibara Drill began to fight with Ojuro and his tail. Pony took on Shoji, Aida took on Juza, who managed to block him in the ice. But since Aida improved his suit, he was able to escape and move at great speed, thus forcing Juzo to hide underground and go to help the team. Aida himself went to Ojuro, who was attacked by Kaibara. Aida sent him to jail at breakneck speed. Meanwhile, Todoroki, remembering his childhood, unleashed his full strength, while Kirishima defended himself and tried to counterattack. When Todoroki decided to go beyond his limit, Juzo appeared and stopped him with his bottom softening. Since Todoroki used up a lot of energy, he passed out. Aida suddenly appeared and attacked Juzo with frenzy force. Picking up Todoroki, he decided to regroup, but Juzo softened the building with his last strength, and the Steel One also with his last strength dumped him in the direction of the fleeing opponents. Aida managed to throw Todoroki back, however, he himself was hit by a liquid building, which became solid after Juzo lost consciousness. The start of the fourth battle was announced, in connection with which Jiro began to track down the opponents by the sounds.
but because of Talkage, who can divide her body into 50 parts and control them to create noise, she interfered with Jiro. So Bakugu decided to attack head on. Because of this, Class A came under a counterattack from Class B, where Debris was thrown on them along with Kojiro's glue, but everyone was saved by Bakugu. Then Bakugo decided to take revenge, and therefore wanted to attack Kojiro, but Awase appeared and welded Bakugo to the building. However, Sato saved him, and after Bakugo attacked Kojiro, and Sato captured him. Jiro then captivated Awase with her sound, and they also twisted him. In the same way, they overtook Togara and tied him up. Meanwhile, Sero busied himself with tying up Tokage's parts, and he also attached a grenade that Bakugu had given to everyone to one of her parts. With this explosion, he sent the Tokage straight into Bakugu's arms, and Class A ended up with a clear victory. Before the start of the next Grand Torino, he called All Might and said that he thought about the situation that happened with Deku. The old man remembered the moment when, even in his youth, Nana Shimura, after inheriting the power, told him about a dream where an indistinct shadow of a man appeared in front of her, who said that the time had not yet come. Then the Almighty thought about when that very time would come and what would happen to the carrier one for all. The fifth duel began, where from the very beginning of the battle class, I decided to repeat the formation of the Bakugu team, where Deku must capture all the attention of the opponents on himself. Meanwhile, class split up, Monomu and Shinsa went in two, the rest separately. Monomu and Shinsa are very similar as they were humiliated as children due to their quirks. Shinsa also talked about taking control of Deku at the sports festival. After that, Deku himself appeared and started chasing Monomu, who tried to piss him off by insulting and humiliating him. He managed to do it, and Deku's quirk got out of control, and he began to destroy everything. However, Deku doesn't know how to stop. Meanwhile, the teams fought against each other at a distance, where with the help of a poltergeist, they threw things reduced using Yui's quirk, and Shota protected the allies with his quirk of repeating what had already happened. Ruraraka saw Deku's lightning bolts. She decided to go to him to calm him down. Seeing Shinso, she asked him to use his quirk on Deku, so he would fight Deku in return. Deku agreed to fight him, and Shinso took control of him, and his power began to calm down. Deku reappeared in the One for All world, where Deguro, the fifth holder of Banjo's power, appeared before him, who informed him that the power reacted to emotions, and since Deku was furious, Banjo's quirk was activated. He also explained that Deku is not in a dream, but in the world of the One for All quirk, where the souls of previous avatars live, adding that Deku must learn to control his emotions so that he can use this power. And after that, Six Quirk's other avatars. Now the very essence of One for All is growing and Deku is generally lucky that Banjo was his first, since it is his quirk that is great for capturing people. Before Banjo disappeared, he gave him motivation, and also said that they would all be by his side, and it was Deku who would have to complete One for All. At this time, Yuraraku slapped Deku, thus waking him up. Clasp continued to attack with their combo attacks. At this time, the Deku was trying to figure out what to do next, and he asked Yuraraka to use weightlessness on him. However, at that moment, he was attacked by Monomu, but in response, Yuraraka used a powerful technique and flumped Monomu. She carried Monomu into the cage, where he shared that he increased the effect of the stolen quirks to 10 minutes, and he also increased their number. And now the effect of the stolen quirks does not disappear after time expires, he will demonstrate this. Meanwhile, Deku began to fight Shinso. Shinso began using the ribbons that Aizawa taught him how to operate. He grabbed some pipes and threw them at Deku, but he suddenly remembered the words of Banjo, who reminds him of All Might. After that, Deku, having calmed his heart, was able to stop the pipes with new power. However, immediately after applying the new technique, he crouched down due to pain, since with his 20% level, it was too early to use this new power. Shinso took advantage of this brief pause and decided to regroup. Deku, having gone to 8% strength, caught up with him, but Manamu entered the battle, who, being in a cage, activated Shota's stolen quirk, and he created another repeated attack on Deku's face. However, this did not stop him, and as a result, he twisted Shinso. He also helped the team, thus they won this fight. According to the results of all battles, class A1. The teachers began to do some work on the mistakes, 
where Deku explained to Aizawa that he was filled with a power that he could not control, and Shinso plans to transfer to the Hero Academy to the faculty that will be chosen for him later. Deku, Bakugu, and All Might sat down for lunch, where Deku explained everything in detail about his new power. Bakugou speculated that maybe All for One had something to do with it, as the One for All quirk came from him. All Might agrees with this, and therefore they need to learn more about quirks in order to avoid further unforeseen consequences. In this connection, they went to the training field, where Bakugou began to beat out Deku's quirk. However, nothing happened. The next day, the teachers decided on the Shinso case. Aizawa then asked Monomi to copy Iri's quirk. He successfully did this, but it turned out that Iri's quirk, as well as Deku's quirk, accumulates power and Monomu can only copy the very nature of the quirk, but cannot copy its power, and therefore nothing happened because of this. Meanwhile, Bakugu and Todoroki passed the Provisional Hero License exam. They successfully received certificates, and after that they already saved the city from water thieves, which they cope with without much effort. The next day, the guys learned about the incident in the city of Teka where 20 people destroyed the whole city. The aftermath is rumored to be worse than the Camino, and this is just the beginning of something unimaginable. At a meeting of UE teachers, it became known that the students' internships would be resumed in accordance with the requirements of the Safety Commission. Director Nezu suggested that perhaps the Commission knows about the impending disaster, and with this gesture they convey a hidden message to the heroes. It is also most likely related to the incident in Daiko. After the meeting, the students were informed about the internship, which will be their assignment for the New Year holidays. The Hawk in Flight talked to Dabi about the incident with the unsuccessful attack of Nomu, where Dabi suggested that he go to the dark side. But first he must prove his loyalty to the League and the entire antisocial world with his act. In this connection, the Hawk told the conversation of the State Commission, and now they will communicate in encryption. Then the Hawk decided to visit the best genes to inquire about his health. However, he attacked him instead and took his body for the League of Villains as proof of loyalty. Meanwhile, Todoroki suggested to Deku and Bakugo that they start an internship at the Prospector's agency, and they accepted. However, the Prospector himself perceived them as a complete set for his son Shoto, and according to his plan, he would only train Shoto, while the rest would simply have to keep up with his speed. The Prospector went to administer justice to the villainous Star Servant, who had created a giant ball of glass and decided to attack the city. However, the Prospector melted this ball and began to pursue the villain, where the Star Servant gang was already waiting for the Prospector at the next turn. Suddenly, Hawk appeared and easily knocked out the bandits. After capturing the villains, Hawk took out a book and gave it to the Endeavor to read individual highlighted words from different pages in it. The Prospector realized that the Hawk was behaving suspiciously, and therefore, in the office, he began to look through the book, where he drew attention to the second syllables. From the book, the Prospector found out that the Army of Liberation has gathered more than 100,000 villains, who in four months will make their move. However, Hawk will try to give a signal, but in the meantime, he asked to prepare more heroes. The Prospector realized that the Hawk and the State Commission already had some idea about the enemy, but they were working in secret. In this connection, the Prospector changed his mind, and therefore decided that Deku and Bakugo would be trained on an equal footing with Shoto. The Hawk himself went to the headquarters of the Liberation Army, where he had a meeting with the Round Table of the League of Villains and the leaders of the army. There they talked about the Commission and their investigation into the Deku case and after that he learned that in four months, Shigaraki would strike and destroy everything. And also the villains do not know how much the strength of the school children has changed, and this only plays into the hands of the hero. Meanwhile, the prospector told his trainees about the three main directions of the hero, rescue, evacuation, and battle. The miner believes that all these three points are important and equal. Therefore, in UEI, students are given knowledge, and already during the internship they gain experience. In this connection, the prospector gave the same homework to Bakugu and Shota. They will need to work out the ability to accumulate and thicken their strength to automaticity. The goal is to learn how to immediately use maximum power. Deku will need to hone his power and not yet use the new power. Meanwhile, Yuraraku and Asui train with the Dragon Riko. They took on the case of an explosion at an illegal trigger plant, a substance that enhances quirks. It turned out that the regions for creating the drug were stolen, and the plant itself was blown up to cover their tracks. 
However, the hero Shelki and his team found a ship that was carrying a large incomprehensible cargo, and the heroes assumed that these were the same stolen regions. But the bandits escaped with the help of an enhanced smoke quirk, and Silky turned to Ryuko for help, and she and the girls went to help him. In the evening, Silky and Asui discovered the smugglers and got on their ship. Ryuko and Najero took over cover from the sky and everyone else from the sea. On the ship, the seal was able to turn off two bandits. However, the third bandit got into the plane, which was attached to the ship, and began to fly away. Then Uraraka was sent from a cannon to get a plane, and she managed to put the bandit to sleep. With the joint efforts of the team, they managed to safely land the plane with Regents, and the mission was successfully completed. It's been a week since the internship started. The guys continue to play catch up with the prospector, and they still cannot catch up with him, but they are already many times faster than on the first day. After that, Fuyumi invited Shoto and his friends to dinner through the prospector, Natsuo also came there, and everyone began to eat. However, the tension between Natsuo and Endeavor did not allow this dinner to go smoothly, as at the table they began to discuss the complex relationship system of the Todoroki family. The prospector also lit a candle for his dead son Toya. After dinner, the prospector took the interns back to Yui, but before that, the psychopath ending, who was released from prison, wants the prospector to send him to the next world, and therefore he kidnaps Natsuo. Ending throws it under the prospector's car with his quirk of controlling road markings. He wants to destroy Natsuo, so that in a rage, the prospector will destroy him. However, the interns get out of the car, and they all begin to attack the villain, while at this time the prospector stared at the floor due to the realization that he could lose his son. Ending is trying with all his might to attract the prospector's attention, and therefore throws up cars with people, whom Deku then catches with his quirk. Then Ending decides to put pressure on the patient, so he throws Natsuo under the bus. However, he is saved by Bakugo, and Ending himself is frozen by Todoroki. The prospector then approached the rescued Natsuo, who pushed him away. The miner begins a sweet speech, and in which he says that he wants to atone for his family, and does not expect them to forgive him, and therefore he will give them a new house, and he himself will live in the old house. The internship of the guys came to an end, and the third quarter began. Azala and Mika were invited to the Tartar prison, where Tsukachi and Gran Torino told that Kurojiri was also Nomu, and Oboro Shirakumo became the basis for him. According to the results of the analyses, this is the deceased friend of Azala and Mika with whom they studied together, and even planned to create agency. However, Oboro died during an internship. In this connection, Gran Torino suggested that most likely a league of villains took possession of his body, and they replaced the body during burning. Now the goal of Aizawa and Mika is to try to bring their friend to mind, because after they studied the Nomu that attacked the Prospector and the Hawk, it turned out that part of his consciousness was preserved, which is why he was looking for the strongest heroes. Aizawa and Mik then entered the room in front of Kurojiri. Aizawa tried to use his quirk, but the mist didn't disappear and Mick thought it was Kurojiri's true form. Aizawa then started to reminisce about the past, saying what a cool hero Oboro was. However, Kurojiri repeated that he did not understand what they were talking about, but Aizawa continued to remember the past. Kurojiri began to have erratic brain activity, where Oboro's face, which said the hospital, became visible. Aizawa understood what Oboro wanted to convey to them, since the hospital is where Kurojiri was born from Oboro's body. Then the hero began to think what kind of hospital. They also turned to the hawk and informed him about the hospital, but since he was next to twice, he put down his phone and went to get drinks. However, when the hawk went out the door, he realized that after learning about the hospital, the puzzle had been completed. The mad scientist Kyudai Garaki was experimenting on Shigaraki, and in appearance is the doctor-like psycho who told Deku as a child that his quirk would never appear. A few months ago, Kurajiri and Shigaraki discussed the possibility of moving to the next level, since All for One was arrested. Kurojiri asked Shigaraki to give him the order to study the powerful power that All for One had left them. It turned out that this power was the Jigentomachia, who, upon seeing Shigaraki, said that he did not recognize him as the hare since Shigaraki was weak. Then she started to attack them, but suddenly a doctor's voice appeared from the receiver, who explained that the Gigantomachi is an all-for-one bodyguard, and because he is very loyal to him, 
He is desperate because of the news about Shigaraki's successor, and in order to calm the giant, the doctor put out a recording of the voice all for one, and the doctor teleported the villains themselves to him. However, he gave himself a false name, and he also deliberately hid the location of his lair. The doctor introduced himself as an assistant to All for One, and he has new Nomu, which are many times stronger than the previous ones. But Kyudai does not yet trust Shigaraki, and therefore the new boss of the League must prove that he is worthy of his attention. Shigaraki started to recount moments from his childhood, but he remembers almost nothing, and because of random pictures, anger erupts in his mind, and he hates the whole world, and he wants the world to collapse, and then everyone can see the most beautiful horizon on the entire planet. Kyudai then explained that he planned to work with Shigaraki from the very beginning, but in order to finally make sure of him, Shigaraki must make the Jigentomachi recognize him. In this connection, the villains will go to deal with the giant, and Dabi will look for a good ally, while taking new Nomu to test them. For a month and a half, the League, along with Shigaraki, has been fighting non-stop all this time with a giant who does not eat at all, and sleeps only for three hours, and the rest of the time he is chasing Shigaraki, and he finds him absolutely everywhere. Shigaraki himself does not sleep all this time, and the rest work in shifts. In one of three-hour-long respite, Juran's phone received a call from Re Destro, the supreme leader of the Liberation Army, who said that Juran was now being held hostage. To prove this, he sent them to watch the news, where they were talking about the fingers found in all the places where the League of Villains fought. These were the fingers of Juran, who was tortured, but he did not say anything and even managed to erase all the data from the phone. However, this did not help, since Reed Destro was able to recover the data, and now for the villains to listen to him. Reed Destro said that he is now watching them through satellites. If they decide to disobey him, then he will transmit their location data to the best heroes, and then the League of Villains will come to an end. He also said that the Liberation Army is almost ready for the great day for which they have been preparing for generations, and they already have more than a hundred thousand warriors at their disposal, and soon they will begin the battle for the liberation of the overpeople. In this connection, he invites Shigaraki and his associates to be in the city of Deiko in an hour, where they will release Juran and give the villain a choice, to fight and leave for another world from the Liberators, or to be caught by the heroes. Then Shigaraki came up with an ingenious plan in which they would need to hold out until the moment when the giant wakes up, which will then find Shigaraki already in Deko, and Shigaraki will send the giant to the Liberation Army. We are told the story of Chikara Yatsubashi, Akadestro, who, due to childhood neglect of his quirk, decided to fight for human rights to use his quirk for free, because this is one of the foundations of human rights. To fight for this ideal, he founded an army of equal use of superpowers and adopted the name Destro, promising to become a man who will return the former order. For several years they fought with the government, but lost. In this connection, he and all his supporters were imprisoned and the army disintegrated. While in prison, Destro wrote a book and then went to another world. However, he did not know that he had a child, the same Reed Destro, who, having already taken the helm, found out about the League of Villains and the fact that they took too much attention to themselves, and he decided to destroy them in the name of Destro. Meanwhile, a League of Villains have arrived in Deco, who have gone to the city and are waiting for the awakening of the Gigantomachi, which was two hours away. In the city, they were met by Koku Hanaba and said that 90% of this city are members of the Liberation Army, and he also thanked the villains for coming as honored guests on their holiday. However, the main dish at this holiday will be the League of Villains, which began to be attacked by crowds of sufficiently strong warriors of the Liberation Army. Toga was attacked by Kizuki. Her quirk can turn any objects into mines with her touch. Then she began to interview Toga while simultaneously undermining her in various ways. In this connection, Toga had to turn into Uraraka. It turned out that Toga learned not only to turn into people, but also to use their quirks, as a result of which she lifted everyone above the ground with weightlessness, and then cancelled the technique, and everyone collapsed to the ground from a great height. Toga liked the world that the Liberators want to create, but due to her lack of strength, she went to rest in a barn, where Twice found her, and they were attacked by a skeptic with a quirk of turning refrigerators into puppets which he controls through a laptop and sensors. Then the puppets injured twice his hands, but he was only happy about this, because due to his mental disorder, he realized that he was real. 
Now, in order to protect his friends, he created a whole bunch of clones that began to multiply and destroy the army of liberators, and the real twice himself went to save Tova's life. He created a clone of her to give a blood transfusion. Meanwhile, Dabby battled Mega Ice, who has the ability to create and manipulate ice. Twice also appeared there, however, the Icy One destroyed a whole bunch of clones with two attacks. This was noticed by Compress, who came up with the idea of using it against Gigantomachia, which should wake up in one hour. However, the doctor heard this through the communication devices, and therefore woke the giant with an all-for-one voice. Gigantomachia by smell went after Shigaraki, who at that moment, together with the spinner, was saved by twice. Then the boss asked the local Naruto to help him get to the tower where the army leader is. But it turned out that by this time one of the clones had already been able to get into this tower and create clones of Shigaraki and his assistants. However, they were easily destroyed with one finger by Redestro. But the copy of Shigaraki managed to hold on and survive, and they began to exchange attacks. During the battle, the leader would conduct his therapy for using quirks at any time without restriction. At that moment, the real Shigaraki appeared next to the tower and destroyed the building. However, everyone survived and Redestro became a giant as his quirk works from stress. The more stress, the more power. He grabbed Shigaraki's hands and began to hurt his fingers, while knowing that if Shigaraki touched with all his fingers, his quirk would work. At that moment, Shigaraki remembered his childhood. Shigaraki was still small. He had a family and his quirk had not yet manifested. He had a strict father, businessman Kataro, who forbade his son Tenko to be a hero and punished him for disobedience. One day, his sister Hannah revealed the secret that their grandmother is the hero Nana Shimura. She is the mother of their father Kataro. Then Hana offered to be heroes in secret from her father. When Tenko was playing with a dog, his quirk accidentally worked on the ball. In the evening, the father found out that the children were in his office and found out about the heroine of the grandmother, but he said that she was an evil woman. As a result, for disobedience, the father raised his hand to Tenko and, as a punishment, again left him on the street. However, while his father was reading the letter sent once from his mother, who loved him, but could not be near, Tenko, sobbing in the street and hugging his dog, accidentally activated his quirk and split the dog without realizing it. At that moment, Khan's sister appeared, who, seeing the remains of the dog, started screaming and ran into the house. But Tenko ran after her, and she too became swollen at his touch. Then Tenko thought that they were attacked by some villain, since he had no idea that he was doing it himself. The whole Tenko family went out into the street, which in a fit of anger, the unthinking Tenko also sprayed. Then the father appeared, who, seeing all this, asked Tenko to stop and hit him, which caused even more aggression, as a result of which Tenko split him, as well as the house and the plot. And already after under the bridge, the confused Tenko extended his hand all for one, and he forever changed the life of Shimura Tenko. It was then that the devil's successor, Shigaraki Tamura, was born. All for one found out that Tenko has a strong propensity for destruction. In this connection, Tenko decided to take revenge on the old offenders, and All for One supported him in this. As a gift for the first disruption of Tenko, the hands of his family were given, and All for One said that Tenko held them close to the skin, and then he would not forget the feeling of that day with his family. The boss then officially renamed Tenko to Tamura, which translates to mourn, as he will now make others mourn, and Shigaraki is an All for One surname. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, Tamura, since he can use his quirk without even using his five fingers, scratched Redestro free. Finally, Shigaraki realized that by destroying his family, he did not experience grief, but on the contrary, it became easier for him, and now he is free from family ties. At this time, Redestro was informed that an incredibly strong giant was approaching them. Redestro then decided to use 80% of his stress and attack Shigaraki with his quirk. However, he was able to incinerate his attack, and therefore Redestro turned on 100% of his quirk and attacked Tomura again. But with his memories refreshed, Shigaraki was able to stop this attack with ease. In this connection, Redestro donned armor and decided to use 150% of his quirk. However, he failed again, as Shigaraki was able to incinerate his attack while stripping him of part of his giant arm. 
Since Shigaraki has nothing more to lose, he will do whatever he wants, and therefore he began to destroy everything that was next to him. At that moment, Gigento Machia arrived, who was shocked at what Shigaraki was doing. As a result, Shigaraki destroyed half of the city. However, Redestro was able to survive as he injured his legs to keep him from being incinerated. Shigaraki approached him and said that there was no point in competing with him. After that, the Liberation Army appeared, which already wanted to start attacking Shigaraki. But Redestro stopped them and announced a new symbol of freedom, Shigaraki, who was able to let go of the burden of the history of blood ties. And in him he saw the chosen one who could lead the Liberation Army to freedom, and he bowed his head before him. Shigaraki himself accepted Redestro's offer, and now he manages the League of Villains and the Liberation Army, and Jigentomachi saw him as all for one and recognized him as his successor and master. As a result, this event was officially recognized as an attack by 20 villains on the city of Daiko, who were destroyed by the locals. Redestro himself was declared a hero, as he allegedly saved the owner of a large company, and during this heroic act he lost his legs. Meanwhile, a skeptic and Koku came to the headquarters of the Liberation Army at the tired members of the League of Villains, who invited them to a meeting, where Ryu Destro transferred his title of Commander-in-Chief to Shigaraki. And now the League of Villains and the Liberation Army have united under the new name Supernatural Liberation Front, and nine people standing on the stage. Shigaraki made his first assistance. After the meeting, Shigaraki was contacted by a doctor. Since Shigaraki fulfilled the condition to be recognized by the Gigantomachi, the doctor will keep his word and give Shigaraki a new power. It also turned out that a hawk was present at this meeting, which through the body of the best genes was able to get a slot in the League of Villains. He met Dabi and to himself began to think that the heroic world was in for hard times and now he needed to figure out the scout of harm from the heroes and until he figured him out, informed the prospector about the front early. However, he also cannot delay because all of Japan is at stake. He also plans to find a hospital and find out who is behind Shigaraki. Meanwhile, the doctor and Shigaraki prepare to give the hare the gigantic power that the doctor was developing for all for one. Before that, the doctor asked why he needed even more power, because he can destroy anyone and even smash the whole city. Shigaraki replied that when he destroyed Daiko, his body could not stand it, and since now he takes the heroes seriously, he needs to become even stronger, and after that he is going to destroy All Might. Then the doctor said that four months of unbearable pain awaited him, and when he was reborn, he would receive everything he wanted, and even the power one for all, which all for one considered the only one that got out of control and went under slope. As a result, the doctor started the process. Meanwhile, at UI school, the students on robots show All Might what they've learned during their internships with various heroes. All Might then praised Bakugou and All Might for becoming stronger and he also showed them the data collected on all the previous one-for-all power holders except for the second and third about which he did not find information. All Might explained that the avatars were ordinary people who knew how to trust, and also added that Deku needs to move to a new level, and this is the study of Nanashimura's quirk, flight. After that, Deku and Bakugu returned to the dorm and began to prepare for the graduation party and the beginning of the semester. Meanwhile, the Hawk gathers information about the upcoming battle for liberation because that very day is already very close. The guys received a message that they will all participate in an expeditionary mission. Tamura Shigaraki became the commander-in-chief of the Supernatural Liberation Front, and the nine people who stood with him on stage became his assistants, the managers of the armies of villains. Also at this meeting was the spy hero Hawk, who realized that he was already too late. However, since the fate of all of Japan now depends on him, he immediately reported all the information to the security committee. And now the most powerful battle between heroes and villains is coming. Based on this, a week goes by. Twice resorts to Hawkeye to ask him for advice on creating a creed, as he is now one of the commanders of the regiment that Shigaraki's army was divided into. All regiments are divided according to the similarity of quirks, and with the creed, Hawk offered twice two options. The first option is freedom above all, and the current system must fall. Or the second option is to be completely devoted to Redestro. But twice, whom the Hawk perceives as a kind person, if you do not pay attention to what he did, chose option one. 
Hawk also spoke about the plans of the villains, where they want to immediately attack large cities and break the control system there in order to create areas of lawlessness, thereby opening the way for the villains into politics, where they will already generalize the topic of self-defense and distribute weapons to civilians. And when the laws stop working, everything will be decided only by force, and then Shigaraki will easily ascend the throne. So the heroes should not hesitate. Well, Hawk plans to take on twice, as his quirk can create gigantic problems for the heroes. We were shown Mr. Dr. Kudagaraki, who is also the founder of the Gaga Hospital and one of the benefactors of the country. However, behind the screen of his kindness lies a real evil genius and the right hand of all for one. He told everyone about this from the report of the Hawk Chukachi. And he also told everyone about the hidden area in his hospital, where he conducts his experiments. Arresting Garaki is not a problem, but everything must be done so that the villains do not have time to strike back, and therefore a new operation called Evil is Over has begun. The heroes of the first squad, led by the prospector, must break into the hospital and grab Garaki and everything in the hidden area. And the second detachment of heroes, led by Strelok, must break into the Ganges mansion, 80 kilometers from the hospital. This is the secret hideout of the front and these operations will have to take place simultaneously. In this connection, the Strelka detachment, with its quirks with massive damage, will go in the forward detachment with a whole bunch of teachers and heroes. And Prospector, Heizawa, and the other heroes headed to the hospital. The main characters Bakugu, Midoriya, Shoto, and other schoolchildren are in the support squad, which will deal with the evacuation of people from the hospital area. And based on all this, the heroes immediately broke into the hospital, and having taken Mr. Doctor, turned off Aizawa's quirk for him. But it turned out that it was only a clone made by Twice, the real doctor at that time was near Shigaraki. And since the transformation of that one has not yet been completed, and the fact that thousands of quirks and new weapons have been accumulated here, Mr. Doctor decided not to give up the hospital without a fight. In this connection, he activated the most powerful advanced Nomu, and even other Nomu for extras and Garaki himself tried to escape with the help of Spears and the quirk of Kurojiri's teleporter. But the hero Rabbit Mirko suddenly appeared, which the prospector sent here, and she immediately destroyed the teleport and thereby cut off the doctor's retreat. However, after she was taken into a trap by the activated advanced Nomu, who have their own thinking, and they are made from the bodies of fierce villains who seek revenge on the heroes, and they even know their names. In this connection, they began to fight with Mirko, and while Prospector and Aizawa, combining their quirks, tried to break through to the hidden zone through the gnome and help Mirko, she began to receive a few blows, where only her incredible physical abilities and reflexes saved her. And the rest of the advanced Nomu stood in the way, to which the remaining sixth hero armor first came, and only after the Prospector, along with Aizawa and others, where the Prospector immediately went to help Mirko and destroyed one of the Nomu. In this connection, Mirko, bypassing Nomu, was able to get injured to her goal, the doctor. But when she saw Shigaraki, she immediately tried to disconnect him from the system. But she only managed to leave a crack on the case with Shigaraki. And after that, she was pierced by her quirks to Nomu. However, the prospector was able to save her and cauterize her wounds. And she told everyone about Shigaraki. Meanwhile, the female Nomu figured out with her brain that their quirks weren't working because of Izawa's eyes, so they started attacking him. And Mick and Laserman took advantage of this and went after the doctor to stop him. But the doctor managed to press the button to resurrect Shigaraki, based on which Mick crushed his case with his sound and Shigaraki's lifeless body fell to the ground. After that, Mick grabbed the doctor and dragged him to calm Noma with his voice, while Laserman remained with Shigaraki's body. Also, while Mick was carrying the doctor, he said that Shigaraki's body was not yet finished and he had not gone to another world, and he only needed to be resurrected. And he also told him about his quirk, which allows him to live two or three times longer than an ordinary person. And now this doctor is already 120 years old, and copies of this all-for-one quirk support their body. Meanwhile, Shigaraki, in his mind, was in the world with a bunch of hands and memories of his loved ones. They seemed to be trying to shield Shigaraki from all for one, but Shigaraki ended up rejecting their help. At that moment, the network shorted out, and Shigaraki was electrocuted, causing him to come to life. Laserman immediately tried to attack him, 
but Shigaraki was stronger and destroyed him, and also took his cloak for himself. After regaining consciousness, Shigaraki began to destroy and split everything around with his quirk. A couple of minutes before these events, the Strelka squad broke into the front mansion through the cement penetration of Cementus and blocked all exits from it. The shooter with his quirk attacked the villains in the lungs and a powerful battle began. However, the skeptic realized that there was a spy in their ranks, and therefore he began to check all the recording cameras with his quirk and realized that it was Hawk, who at that time took twice with his feathers so that he would not use his quirk. He does not plan to destroy him, but will only restrain him so that he does not create an army of clones. And he also told twice that everything he did and said was only for the sake of infiltrating the villains. Well, twice realized that it was his fault that the hawk was able to infiltrate here, since it was he who brought him. And he, on emotions, began to create clones, which the hawk destroyed without any problems. He also warned him that even though he considers twice his almost friend, he will do anything for his cause, even to destroy twice. Twice continued to try to escape from him and help his other allies, but the hawk did not let him do it and even damaged him. However, twice continued his attempts, and he also called the heroes dirt, because they do not have real feelings like in their bandit brotherhood. After that, Hawk realized that twice could only be stopped by destroying him, and he was about to do it, but suddenly he was attacked from behind by Dabby, who was about to burn the Hawk, not even paying attention to the fact that twice was nearby. The Hawk immediately assessed the situation and realized that twice was no longer so dangerous, and now he himself had to get out of here or Dabby would burn him, and Dabby tried to do it, but the hawk managed to dodge and even attack in response. Well, twice, by this time, got out onto the balcony and bleeding red liquid, was able to save Compress and Toga. He said goodbye to them and went to another world from the loss of the red liquid. Meanwhile, Dabby continued to fry the hawk, and he also said that he mourns for twice, because with his departure to another world, Dabby's dream moved away. It turned out that Dabby knows the real name of the hawk, with whom he said goodbye a long time ago. Dabby also said that he doesn't care about the League of Villains and just continues Stein's work. He was about to destroy the Hawk, but a couple of minutes before, Takayami, having seen their battle, was able to escape from Fat Gum and head to this place, where he eventually managed to save the Hawk, who was already unconscious. And there Dabby said that it was the Hawk that destroyed twice. Since Takayami's shadow was weak due to the fire, he barely managed to escape from Dabby but he jumped after them and almost fried them. However, he was thwarted by the snowman, who was fighting Lady Gora, whom he attacked and knocked out. This allowed Takayami to regroup and, grabbing Hawk, carried him to the doctors. Cementus took on the snowman, while Juza and Kimori helped with their mass attacks to liquefy the ground and cover everyone with mushrooms. Meanwhile, Deku and the others were already finishing the evacuation from the hospital area. And there, just after the resurrection of Shigaraki, Deku began to hear voices in his head. This was the first carrier of one for all. He said that the strength of the enemy has increased and that a retaliatory strike is coming, and Deku must stop him. And immediately after that, that same massive splitting from the awakened Shigaraki began. He split everything around, including those very advanced Nomu. The heroes grabbed each other and began to run away, and in order to save Aizawa, the armor sacrificed his life, and literally in just a couple of minutes, everything around the hospital was destroyed by Shigaraki. Well, the heroes continued to evacuate people by all possible means, and also after Shigaraki contacted the Gigantomachia, which was under the mansion, he ordered the giant to act as Shigaraki wants to destroy everything. After that, Shigaraki took a few surviving quirk-depriving bullets, but the prospector immediately attacked him and tried to destroy him but Shigaraki was able to dodge and nearly split Endeavor. It also turned out that he has a frenzied regeneration, and he also let slip that he wants to get the one-for-all quirk. He'd also had a built-in ragdoll quirk, which helps to determine the distance and weaknesses of enemies. He saw Deku and flew towards him. The guy, realizing what was happening, and hearing through the Endeavor's microphone that Shigaraki needed one-for-all, he began to run away from people so as not to endanger them. Bakugo ran with him, as he wants to repay Shigaraki's debt for All Might's departure. He also doesn't want to be inferior in strength to Deku. Well, Deku, at least through the prospector who pursued Shigaraki, confirmed that Shigaraki was pursuing him. 
However, the villain realized that the heroes communicate with each other and therefore made electromagnetic waves and destroyed all communication around them. It also turns out that during the splitting he kept some capsules with Nomu, and with these waves he activated them, and therefore Nomu began to crawl out and the heroes had to fight them. And Shigaraki, in the next few seconds, got to Deku and Bakuva, from whom Gran Torino saved. Shigaraki was then taken over by Ryuko, the prospector and the wounded Aizawa, whose life is now very important to defeating Shigaraki. He immediately turned off his quirks, and Prospector was about to burn him. But it turned out that Shigaraki continued to fly, since this is not his quirk, but the usual wave of his hands. Meanwhile, Gran Torino explained to the guys that the two of them could not defeat the improved Shigaraki. And he also said that they miscalculated with the speed of Shigaraki, because it turns out that no one can cope with his speed, which means they will not be able to catch up. Therefore, they will fight with him here as long as Aizawa's quirk works. He also warned Deku that Shigaraki had been given the all-for-one quirk and could steal the quirks and pass them on to others. However, by this time, Shigaraki was able to repel all of the Endeavor's attacks without any quirks by throwing him at Ryuko and slamming them into the ground. After that, he immediately switched to Aizawa so that he would not interfere with him, and he almost destroyed it, but suddenly Deku appeared with all his might and attacked him. Deku then grabbed Shigaraki for Bakugou to pierce him with his powerful attacks, but he freed himself and counterattacked both guys. Prospector then compared Shigaraki's strength to All Might's. A voice sounded in the villain's head and told him to get one for all, and Shigaraki, unexpectedly for everyone, said that Deku would become his younger brother. Shigaraki himself was shocked, because it was not him who said it, it was his all-for-one mentor, whom Shigaraki is going to surpass. Gran Torino joined the fight, who could fight with him on an equal footing in speed, because his grandfather had once trained the All Might himself. But Shigaraki still seemed to be on a completely different level, he almost immediately knocked out the old man. Bakugou, Deku, and Endeavor then took turns attacking Shigaraki. And even though he seemed to have received quite good damage, he began to get even more angry. The prospector tried to burn him again, but he dodged and was hit by Gran Torino, whose legs he injured. We are shown memories where Nana Shimura, for the sake of saving the world, abandoned her son, who became the father of Shigaraki. She did all this to keep all for one from getting to them. And she even destroyed all the data about it and forged documents. But as we can see it didn't work. After that, we were returned to reality, where Shigaraki pierced the Gran Torino, and then he took out a bullet that cancels quirks from his pocket. Seeing this, Ryuko and Deku try to stop him, but the villain managed to throw a bullet, which ended up in Aizawa's leg, and he, in order not to lose his strength, cut off his leg with a bullet. Meanwhile, near the mansion, Cementus continued to fight against the snowman, and Dabi came to Compress, who said that Togu, having learned about Twice's departure from life, turned into a hero and went to take revenge on them. And immediately after, Gigantomachia crawled out of the ground. He grabbed everyone who was from the League of Villains and rushed at breakneck speed towards Shigaraki. Lady Gora tried to stop him, but he pushed her aside with no problem. Midnight and Wooden Kamui tried to stop him, but Compress prevented them by throwing giant debris on them. And since Midnight received heavy damage, she turned to Yoirozu to create and distribute anesthetics to everyone so that they would lull the giant who was just running in their direction. Well, the villains came running to Midnight itself. And as a result, we will not see our beauty again. Yoirozu began creating anesthetics. And in order to keep the giant in place, they softened the ground with the help of Juz's power. Yoirozu also threw dynamite into it. And in the end, it all worked. But the villains on his back began to interfere with the guys. They decided to attack Kirishima with accumulated electricity, but he was knocked out by Compress. And right after Gigantomachia sneezed, and Deby added fire to this, thereby setting fire to a giant piece of forest and getting rid of the school children. However, Ashida was still able to break through the fire, and she almost threw an anesthetic into the giant's mouth. But he seemed to come to his senses and abruptly switched to school children and he almost destroyed Ishido, but Kirishima was able to protect her, who was also able to climb the giant and throw the anesthetic into his mouth. After that, professional heroes flew in and started a fight with a giant who began to transform, and as a result, he knocked out all the heroes. 
but before that, the hero Majestic managed to save the schoolchildren. Well, the giant continued on its way, destroying everything in its path. Meanwhile, the fight with Shigaraki continued, where after cutting off his leg, Aizawa passed out and thus stopped using his quirk. Shigaraki immediately decided to end this fight, but he was pushed back by Shoto. Then Deku, out of anger, was able to use 100% of his strength and therefore began to attack Shigaraki. And to prevent him from touching the ground and activating his decay, Deku grabbed everyone with Nana Shimura's quirk and lifted everyone off the ground. At that moment, Deku remembered how other students taught him how to control various quirks similar to his new abilities, where Yuraraku taught Deku how to fly with his power. There was also a conversation between Bakugou and All Might about the fact that everyone will sooner or later find out about Deku's power, and that Bakugou helps him to atone for bullying him in the past. Well, in reality, Deku, turning on 100% of his strength, began to attack Shigaraki, holding him with fetters. And Bakugo realized that Deku would soon get tired, and therefore decided to raise the prospector to him so that he would finish off Shigaraki with one blow, and Shoto would cool him down. In the end, he raised Endeavor, and he burned Shigaraki with a powerful attack, but the villain's body was able to withstand it. Shigaraki unexpectedly took control of All for One, calling Deku a brother. And then he tried to destroy Deku, but Bakugo turned on and pushed his friend thereby taking the blow on himself. Then Shoto grabbed him. Deku, having heard the words all for one about the fact that today a lot of people suffered in vain, turned on rage and began to be covered with strength. It flew up to Shigaraki's body and was about to destroy it. But all for one touched him and began to sif in power. And we were transferred to the consciousness of quirks, where there were Deku, Shigaraki, and the all for one that had grown into him which reminded Shigaraki that if he had not lent him the power, then he would not be here alive. Shigaraki, in response, said that this was not so, because he did everything on his own. But Deku at that time tried to move, but fell, and Nanashimura appeared above him. She said that for now, Deku can't move in this world, so they will take care of him. Well, all for one said that everything happens here in the same way as with transplanted organs, since a part of the soul is transplanted along with them. And the same thing happens with the transferred quirks. Shigaraki, meanwhile, remembered Gran Torino's words about Nana Shimura's insults. After that, he attacked everyone out of anger, but Shimura repulsed the attack. Also, Shigaraki tried to destroy all for one, but this did not work out and then Deku saw in Shigaraki the suffering of a child. After that, the first appeared and told his brother that they would never leave the body of this child, and they threw Shigaraki back. And then, all for one invited his student to join their forces, and he also began to blame Deku for the fact that he, like All Might, was losing strength because of his anger. But the first said that this is not so, because Deku's anger gives strength to protect those who are dear to him. Hearing this, Deku was able to jump towards Shigaraki and their bond was severed. Based on what now, All for One told Shigaraki to retreat and finish his body in order to destroy everyone later. It also turned out that Gigantomachia, after breaking the connection, sensed the presence of the second owner and he continued on his way there. Well, in the cities on his way, evacuation began, where so far all the heroes were busy with this. Nijero, along with Ingenium, went to the prospector to give him information. Meanwhile, on the back of the giant, Davy realized that Shigaraki had awakened, and therefore the end of the heroic world had come. And everyone agreed with this, except for Toga, who will give her answer after talking with some heroes. Also, she still does not understand where the line is between heroes and villains, because now heroes also destroy. After that, she, seeing Yuraraka, took her equipment from the compress and went to her, there, she pretended to be an old woman and lured Yuraraka into a building, where she asked if Yuraraka wanted to destroy Toga. But she only answered her that she did not have time for this, because she needed to save as many people as possible, and now she is no longer the weak girl she was. And they started a fight with Toga, where Toga explained that her quirk prevents her from living among ordinary people. And also there, during the battle, Toga got the keychain of All Might, and she realized that this thing was important for Uraraku. And she compared her to the importance of Twice, because he was like an older brother to her. But suddenly Asui appeared, and Togu, taking advantage of the giant's run, disappeared. 
and she decided to return to the League and stop suppressing her feelings. Meanwhile, after Shigaraki and Deku separated, Deku picked up Shoto. And Shigaraki inside himself began to fight with all for one, as he did not want to do what he was told. But Ida and Ejero appeared, and a giant had also arrived here by this time. Shoto and Ejero decided to finish off Shigaraki while there was time, but did not have time, as the giant attacked them. And then he asked Shigaraki what to do, but the boss was already unconscious, based on what Dabi took advantage of the moment, and he washed off the dye from his hair, and revealed to the prospector and Shoto his real name, Toya Todoroki. The Fire family was in shock, because Tuya is the eldest child in the Todoroki family, who was burned in a fire. And also in parallel with his words, the skeptic, having hacked into television, began to show the whole of Japan a video prepared by Dabi where he told everyone that he was the son of the prospector, and this was confirmed by a DNA test. And he, as a villain, has already destroyed 30 innocent people. And he did all this, since his father once went crazy to overtake All Might, and so his first son Toya appeared, who, although he even possessed a fiery quirk stronger than prospectors however, he did not live up to his father's expectations, and therefore, according to Toya, he was abandoned and forgotten. But since then he has not forgotten anything, he has been watching all this time in order to take revenge on his father. And now the goal of his life is the suffering of the prospector, since he can no longer get away from the past. Well this again proves that the blue flame drives people crazy, because Dobby decided to repeat the fate of Azula. We were shown moments from the past, where the prospector near the mountain discovered that his son Toya had been burned in a forest fire. They could not even find his bones, as they could have burned to the ground due to the high temperature. And they explained to us that Tuya possessed a strong flame, but his body, instead of being immune to fire like the prospector, received immunity to ice like his mother. The prospector was glad that he had such a son. However, he kept making babies to get the perfect mix of quirks. Tuya, on the other hand, seems to have become obsessed with proving to everyone that he is the one who can defeat all might. However, after each use of his quirk, he was left with burns. And the prospector, worrying about him, asked him not to torture himself anymore and live a normal life. And the prospector himself continued to experiment, where as a result, he managed to do what he wanted. It was Shoto. We were brought back to reality, where Dabi showed everyone the picture received from the skeptic, where the hawk destroys twice. And he also made inquiries somewhere on the hawk that his father was a bandit and a villain, and the hawk supposedly hid it all. And he also said that the hawk, in order to get into the League of Villains, destroyed the hero best genes. And he said all this to undermine people's faith in heroes. The prospector was shocked by what he heard, because when his son Toe died, he tried to find him, but could not, and he really thought that his son was dead. And right on the field, the prospector went into himself. Toya decided to take advantage of this, and he attacked. Shoto began to fight with him, who at the same time tried to bring his father to his senses so that he would protect Deku and Bakugo. But suddenly, at the last moment, Live Best Jeans appeared. He immediately twisted the giant and all the villains with his threads. It turns out that Best Jeans was in reserve for Chukachi's plan, and he is the last hope for saving the world. However, Dabi used his fire and was able to burn the threads as well as fry best jeans and Nejero. Shigaraki began to dream and talk in his sleep, and he told the Gigantomachia that he needed to destroy them, and because the giant began to break out of the threads. Best jeans tried to restrain him, but his body could not stand it anymore, and at the call of Shigaraki, the Nomu came running, with whom the heroes fought. But Mirio unexpectedly came to the rescue who through Airy was able to regain his strength, and he started attacking Nomu while protecting best genes. He was also joined by an injured but mad Bakugo, along with Ida and Nijero. They started fighting Nomu as a group while best genes held off everyone else. Shoto, at that time, fought with Tuya, who was trying to break the moral side of his brother, but Deku intervened there. He explained that the past cannot be changed, but now he chooses to look at the current real prospector, who helps people and makes him stronger as a mentor. But while they were discussing it all, the giant broke the threads. However, by the same moment, the prospector, having heard Deku's words, perked up and attacked the giant with all his might, from which the anesthetics thrown earlier worked in his body, and the giant collapsed to the ground and fell asleep. After that, 
Compress decided to save everyone, who at the beginning remembered the old days where the League lived in poverty, and they were supported by the idea of changing the world. And Compress decided to sacrifice himself to put on the ultimate escape show. To free himself from the threads of best genes, he canned a part of his body to free his hands. After that, he began to preserve all the villains and save them from the threads, at the same time beating best genes and conserving his clothes. He also did all this since he was a descendant of the King of Thieves, Harimoji, who was similar to Robin Hood. He destroyed corrupt heroes and gave money to people. Compress now believes that Shikaraki will change the world just as Harima tried to change it. On top of that, Shoto lost to Dabi, and Compress mothballed him too. He also tried to give Spinner time to wake up Shikaraki and give orders to the giant, and as a result, they managed to bring him to his senses, and he threw everyone away with an energy wave. But it turned out that it was all for one who decided to intervene in the situation as Shigaraki refused to back down. And the more Shigaraki clings to the old, the more all for one becomes in his body, because now they are one with him. He also summoned Noma to him with this wave, and sitting on them, began to run away. Deku tried to stop him, but he pushed him back and said that when he finished Shigaraki's body, they would meet with him again. And also compressed through a spinner ball at the villains, and they safely rode away with Nomu, and the compress himself was captured by the heroes. As a result, this battle ended in catastrophic losses on the part of the heroes. And also, a couple of days before the start of the operation, the security committee, to which Yastreb reports, tried to take control of Redestro and his Detneret company by inviting him to a meeting. But in the end, instead of the real Redestro, a clone of Twice came to the meeting, who destroyed the chairman of the committee. And by the time the operation began, the committee was in real chaos. They also explained to us that of the villains during the operation, Compress, Gigan Tomichi, Mr. Doctor, and the Snowman who was defeated by Cementus, were captured, and one of the leaders of the front was also captured. Reed Destro in the mansion was destroyed by the Strelok, and 16,929 villains who came to the front meeting were also captured, and 132 villains were able to escape after the giant. And now the police all over the country have launched raids to find all the leaders of the Liberation Front and also a lot of heroes, after Davy's video and the subsequent insult from people, left their hero posts and started looking for other jobs. We were also informed that Majestic and Midnight died during the attack on the mansion. Well, the doctor explained to us that then Shigaraki was resurrected because of his dreams and hatred, which led to such large losses among the heroes. However, all for one, taking advantage of the devastation in the heroic world, decided to use Shigaraki's body to get to his body and destroy the Tartar prison. There are six types of cells in this prison, and the most malicious villains are kept at the lowest levels deep underwater. And it turns out that the body of All for One is kept at a depth of 500 meters. But this did not stop him from using the synchronism between his minds and quirks, and turn off the prison's defense system, and then open all the cells from the inside. As a result, in just a few minutes, the most powerful prison fell, and the entire villainous elite broke free, including Steen, Chizaki, and even one of the best assassins who was lured to his side by All for One. After breaking into a powerful prison, All for One decided to go to six more prisons, and more than 10,000 villains turned out to be free. Also, all for one made it clear to Shigaraki's followers that he intended to fulfill Shigaraki's dreams and change the world. In the meantime, they must protect him while he recovers. Meanwhile, Bakugo in the hospital came to his senses and began to find out how the others were feeling. He was told that Shigaraki had escaped, while Gran Torino and Aizawa survived and had already recovered. Prospector and Shodo are also already recovering, and at the moment, only Deku still hasn't regained consciousness. Bakugo decided to go to him so that if he suddenly died unexpectedly, beat him for it. And he also learned about the whole crowds of people who are now near the hospital and expressed their dissatisfaction with the heroes. Meanwhile, Hawk and Best Jeans were driving to Hawk's mother's house, and the bird remembered his past, where his father was hiding with his family in an abandoned house for destroying a person for money. But as a result, he was captured by the police, and Hawk's mother, worried that she would be imprisoned, began to hide. But they were found by people from the committee, who offered her a deal where the mother would have to cut off any ties with her talented son, and turn him over to the committee. 
In return, they will take care of her life on themselves. The mother agreed to this, and the hawk said goodbye to his real name and was made a special hero. They also explained the situation with Best Jeans, where then, after meeting with the hawk, he was sent into suspended animation with the help of technology in the central hospital, so that Dabby would believe in his death and after his body was kept in the laboratory of villains, where the hawk at the right time awakened him. And since now the entire police is busy searching for the escaped villains, lawlessness reigns in the cities and everyone does what he wants, and people's discontent is only growing. This caused many hero agencies to shut down and stop doing business, and already about half of the population does not trust their lives to heroes. Meanwhile, the heroes got to the house of Hawk's mother, who, it turns out, left the house and left a letter where she said that Davy learned information about her son through her, and in order not to harm anyone else, she decided to leave. Well, because of all this, Hawk realized that since the committee no longer exists, then he will now do as he sees fit. Now he is going to help Endeavor fix the situation with heroic authority and with his family moments. Meanwhile, in the cities, chaos really took place where one part of the people was engaged in robberies, and the other part of the people used the detonarat weapon to protect themselves. Well, the prospector still could not come to his senses after the information from his eldest son. And in order to understand this situation, his wife and children came to him, who said that what happened to Toya was also their fault, so they began to discuss it. And we were shown the prospector's memories of the history of the creation of the Todoroki family where the young prospector came to woo the family of his future wife Ri, who, in turn, understood that this was a marriage of convenience, and her once great family would only benefit from the union with the prospector. And now the prospector, after an unsuccessful attempt with Toya, continued to make children, until Shoto appeared. Tuya, on the other hand, began to withdraw into himself and try to prove to his father that he could defeat All Might but the prospector tried to bring him back to reality so that his son could live an ordinary life because the guy's whim burns his body. But Tuya did not back down. He even once tried to attack little Shoto out of jealousy. But the prospector guarded the boy as his secret weapon, which instead of childhood received continuous restrictions in communication with the family and endless training. Well, by this time, Toya already partially resembled the current Debbie, who was simply obsessed and did not listen to anyone, including his mother who, because Toy was in burns, because she did not stop him, was attacked by an angry prospector. And Ri also began to break down the psyche due to the actions of the prospector, and she began to see Shoto as the prospector, whom she was also afraid of. And she automatically confused Shoto's look with the prospector and burned the guy's face. And already in the psychiatric hospital, she found out about Toya's death. It turned out that then Toya discovered a blue and already stronger flame in himself, and he called his father to the mountain to show him this. But he did not come there, which caused anger in his son. And he, having created a flame, could not control it. And as a result, what happened happened, where Toya turned into Dabby. And now he is waiting for the moment when the prospector will again appear in public to see how he suffers. Best Jeans and Hawk came to the prospector's room to report that the government has requested help from other countries, but due to the devastation in the security department, the heroes will not arrive soon. In this connection, they suggested that the three best heroes team up, and also they cannot ignore Debbie's performances, and they will need to give answers to the journalists. But first, Hawk wants to know what one for all is. The prospector replied that he did not know, but he remembered Deku, and they decided to talk to him. Meanwhile, Deku was in his mind at a meeting with the owners of One for All. They decided to urgently talk to Deku before he woke up. They couldn't do that before, but four months ago, One's quirk began to develop, and an encounter with All for One brought them closer to Deku. In this connection, the conversation was started by the fourth owner of Shinomori's quirk. He is also a local Spider-Man, since Deku used his quirk spider sense in the last battle. He once hid from All for One and was a hermit where he passed away from old age. And Shinomori was second only to All Might in terms of the duration of using one for all. He hid for 18 years and developed a quirk. But then his body gradually began to crack. And they eventually found out together that this is due to the presence of several quirks in the body. But the first added that those who had a quirk for a short time died in battle due to the consequences. But All Might and Deku are special because they didn't have their own quirk and therefore they can use one for all without consequences for themselves. This is because a body born with a quirk cannot accept one for all, 
and it turns out that the power is maximally revealed in a person who does not have a quirk. Which means that Deku is either the last one for all bearer, or he will need to find a worthy person without a quirk in the future. The carriers moved on to the next topic, where Deku will have to destroy Shigaraki, because his hatred can no longer be cured, but All for One raised him like that, and already four times All for One tried to steal one for all, but he could not do it, so now he is looking for new ways. Well, Nanashimura added on her own that this needs to be done, even though Shigaraki is her grandson, but if he finally turns into a monster, then he will no longer be stopped and they understand that they are putting it all on the shoulders of a teenager, but they have no other options. However, Deku refused to be destroyed, because then, in the mind of Quirks, he noticed that Shigaraki was suffering like a child inside. He also believes that One for All was created to save, not to destroy, and he wants to try to save Shigaraki. But later it turned out that it was just Deku's test, where the first said that they would fully support the guy. And that was the end of their conversation. Well, in the meantime, Hawk and Best Jeans came to Deku and the Almighty in the Ward, who immediately said that they wanted to talk about One for All, because this name was now very much smashed by the media. The prospector also said that now Shigaraki is hunting Deku, and the Hawk came here to verify the data, because now they are not only fighting evil, but also fighting for the honor of all heroes with society. And as a result, the Almighty said that he would tell them the whole truth, but in a different place. Three days passed, but the panic among the people did not subside. In this connection, Prospector, Best Jeans and Hawk went public to confirm and partially refute Debbie's words. They also said that since there are now many times fewer heroes, they will reduce the protected area with heroes. The refuge for all civilians will be the UE school, where the families of the students have already been moved, and also the Prospector asked to blame only him for everything that happens, and leave those who risk their lives to save others alone. He also told everyone that he didn't know anything about One for All. Meanwhile, Deku's body recovered and seemed to be strengthened. It turns out that the body is pumped along with the power of One for All. His past wounds were almost all healed without a trace. Well, and most importantly, after being discharged from the hospital, he decided to leave Yui so as not to endanger others, because the villains will even come there for him. In this connection, he wrote letters to all his classmates and described there the whole situation about the power of all for one. Then we were shown the situation in the city, where people stopped relying on their heroes and began to create communities, defending themselves and using weapons. The muscle, who was helped to free himself by all for one, began to fight with the third year of the Ketsubutsu school Yu Shindo with the heroic name Grand, where Yo was smashed into the ground. But suddenly a homeless Deku appeared, who saved Yo, and as a result easily destroyed the muscle using 45% of his strength. He also tried to find out from muscle where Shigaraki and all for one were, but he didn't know anything, and he was simply ordered to do whatever he wants. In this connection, Deku handed him over to the police. It was then explained to us that Deku had recently received equipment from the US so that he could use 100% of his quirk's power and not damage his limbs. And he also catches villains to find out where Shigaraki is, because after the release of prisoners from prisons, he and other villains from the front lay low. Well, the heroes supported Deku in this matter, since they understand that even if Tartarus was destroyed by the villains without problems, then the Yui school would not survive either, so they are also in favor of being the first to attack the villains, but now it only remains to find them. Well, now it turns out that Deku collects information and stands guard over the peace of people and he can also use almost all the quirks of previous one for all carriers at the same time. Meanwhile, Deku saves a giant girl from civilians who have already attacked everyone who looks strange, and it turns out that almost everyone who wanted to was evacuated to Yui, and in the process of all this, the first persuaded two more carriers, who for some reason were turned away to the wall, to help them in the fight against all for one and they both agreed. As a result, this deuce of heroes opened up Deku's access to their quirks. Well, in parallel with this, distrust of the heroes grew more and more, and the detonators read Destro more and more distributed their weapons to people. And although our heroes understood that Shigaraki's body was not yet ready, and according to Mr. Doctor, he needed another three months, a new problem arose. Mercenaries sent by All for One began to come after Deku. The first mercenary was Hawkeye's former mentor, whom he told Deku about and warned that she was super dangerous. 
Her name is Lady Nagant. She is considered the best shooter in Japan. Her secret is in the bullets she creates from her hair. She has a barrel in her hand, and she can create absolutely any kind of bullets and control them. And with her first shot, Deku shattered the sensor that All Might and the others were tracking him with. But Deku did not listen to the hawk and decided to counterattack this lady. At this point, Lady Nagant remembers how, during a prison break, she was recruited by All for One, offering her a levitation quirk for work. She also took with her the armless Chizaki, who knows Deku by sight, and they made an agreement. If he helps her, she will help him meet his father. Since Chizaki wants to apologize to him, and Nagat herself once worked in the security committee and was engaged in all the black work of the committee to eliminate all corrupt heroes and villains. But the committee hid all this and showed only the bright side of the coin. But when Nagat was about to quit this, she was not allowed to do so. And then Nagat destroyed everyone, in connection with which she ended up in Tartarus. Meanwhile, in reality, Deku uses his spider sense and leg quirk to dodge bullets at the speed of light. Then Nagat decided to play on heroic kindness. She fired a bullet straight at Shizaki, who had run out onto the roof, to distract Deku. However, he, using all his quirks, was able to outrun the bullet and save the villain. And then, with a powerful leg attack, he broke the trunk of this lady. Deku also realized that Nagant was still on the side of the heroes, because she could immediately immobilize Deku and take him to all for one but she did not. He invited her to change and again take the side of the heroes, because she already knows the whole inner kitchen. However, All for One suspected that Negan could betray, and therefore hedged it and blew it up. Then the hawk suddenly appeared and picked up the falling Negan. He tried to explain to the mentor that not everything is lost in her life, because he himself is now in her place. And if it were not for faith in people, then he would have broken too. As a result, she emotionally revealed the place where she was supposed to deliver Deku in two months. This is Haivari Castle. She also said that several other mercenaries were tasked with delivering Deku. After that, the prospector flew there, removed Chizaki from the roof, who said that he needed to see his father in order to apologize. But Deku suggested that the villain first send his apologies to Eri, and then he would help Chizaki with a meeting with his father. Also, the Almighty appeared there who was also attacked before, but he frightened the villains with his coolness, and they fled. After these events, Deku and the rest of the heroes arrived at the same castle, where it turned out that All for One was waiting for them. He left them a video where he said that now he no longer needs All Might, he will now hunt Deku, and he also blew up the castle at the end of the video, but the heroes somehow managed not to get hurt. And also after the heroes discussed the actions of All for One and realized that he did not seem to want Deku to be despised by people. Therefore, he does not reveal to everyone the secret that Deku has one for all. Meanwhile, upon returning to the city, Deku suffered another attack by a mercenary, but he destroyed it alone without any problems. In turn, All Might tried with all his might to cheer up Deku, as now he has a large load on him. And in his understanding, the main thing is that the guy now does not break morally. However, Deku had already begun to go insane, and he left All Might ugly without a word and went to live on the streets alone. All this is due to the fact that Deku stopped eating, sleeping, visiting adult sites, and stopped listening to the advice of the previous owners of the quirk. And all this because of his lack of understanding of the current state of affairs. However, he still wants to complete one for all and restore the world. And when Deku was already at the limit, he was attacked by the escaped villain puppeteer, who can take people under control and fight with them like a human shield. However, Deku came to the aid of his classmates, who immediately destroyed the puppeteer. It turns out that after receiving the letter, the students decided of their own free will not to leave Deku in a difficult situation. And in order to find him, they went to Director Yui. They told him everything and he helped them with the invitation of the prospector, to whom they also explained everything using the example of the Almighty, who, saving the world, completely forgot about himself, which led to the fact that the world was left without the power of the Almighty. And so, through the heroes, they found Deku in order to return him to the protection of Yui, so that he could at least rest and come to his senses. But Deku refused to go to school and put everyone in danger. He tried to escape using his Rasta quirk, but Bakavu cleared the smoke. He then tried to jump out with his threads, but Siro grabbed him. Also immediately, Deku attacked Jiro with her sound, and he was grabbed by Tailed Beast, 
but Deku continued to resist, and Takayami joined in to hold him. Yoirozu also created shackles for Deku. However, it didn't work, as Deku turned on his quirks and escaped without much trouble. And although our guy understood that everyone is now worried about him, he does not want to risk them. And also there in the process, his mask flew off, and immediately after he was frozen by Shoto, he, like the other students, began to talk about how Deku had changed his life. And so they are all ready to share his heavy load with Deku now, and help find all for one. And they all want to fight side by side with Deku. But he broke free again, and turning on his quirk, began to run away. Yuraraku tried to stop him, but she did not have time. And then Shoto and Bakugo joined. They dispersed the ball with Bakuga and Aida. Eventually, they were able to catch up with Deku, where Aida grabbed his arm. And then a second carrier of the quirk joined their conversation, who said that Deku needs people with the same views as his, and who are ready to continue to run alongside him. And Deku flew down with Aida as he ran out of strength. And already there he was caught by Kirishima, who finished off the guy by reminding him of the case when his classmate without a quirk protected a person without a quirk. And Deku after these words was touched, but he said that he would not mind returning. But he was afraid, because there are so many people in Yui who could suffer because of him. Also, Bakugo joined their conversation, who told his story about Deku and his power. And he said that even though Deku does almost everything perfectly in his opinion, however, he alone in this state cannot reach the ideal and defeat all for one, so they want to help him. And Deku replied that they had already surpassed him, collapsed to the ground. And as a result, they went to Yui, where the director explained that now the school is even better protected than Tartarus, because it is not just a protected land, and each sector has a magnetic cushion engine that will help the sector to go underground under protection in case of danger 3000 plates. And you can even get to the Ketsubutsu school in the sector, with which these passages are connected. The students, along with Deku, approached the walls of Yui, where at the entrance they were met by a crowd of people who were against Deku being in Yui, since they know that villains are hunting him. But in the end, the heroes managed to persuade people to let Deku in, because people realized that before they were just spectators, whom the heroes guarded for the sake of glory. But now everything has changed, because now they are protected not for the sake of glory, but just like that. And if they do not support the heroes now, then the old days will never return. And on top of that, Deku also promised that he would do everything possible to return peacetime. Meanwhile, the headmaster informed Aizawa about everything that was happening with his students and his former friend Kurajiri, who was secretly transported to the central hospital so that Aizawa would try to bring him back to our world. And it also turns out that the school created protection against Toga, because they found out how long her transformation works, and each refugee is checked on time. Well, the Almighty at that time decided not to sit idle, and he went to put pressure on those who refused to evacuate with authority. Steen watched him from the side. When the hero reached the square where his statue was, he found Deku's mask, as well as Steen, who refused to believe that All Might was in front of him, even after he showed his hero form for a second. However, the villain still deceived, because when the girl appeared, whom All Might had once saved from all for one during the battle in Kamino, and she now comes and cleans up the traces of vandalism. Stain explained to the Almighty that people value him not for his strength, but for his principles. And this fire gave hope to many, and this fire must not go out. And proceeding from what Stain, in tribute to the Almighty, gave the data from Tartarus to the Almighty which the dying guard gave him and asked him to transfer them to an honest person. And also Stain asked the Almighty to come for his life, after he figured it all out, because he destroyed forty heroes. And Stain did all this for the sake of a more just world. After that, we were taken back to the school, where the class of students were busy cleaning up Deku to bombard him with questions later. But Shoto slowed everyone down, because Deku needs to get some sleep. However, Deku remembered that he ugly left All Might without even saying goodbye to him. But it turns out that he was already at that time near their house. And already on the street, he apologized to Deku for the fact that he could not help him. In addition, he said that the last fight is coming soon. And they have received data that will help them answer many questions. And getting an answer would require the strength of absolutely everyone, including the Almighty. Well, Deku apologized for trying to do everything himself, because only together they can win. Then All Might went to Endeavor and others who are outside the school so as not to cause discontent among the people. 
Deku himself went to bed, and the students decided to come up with a musical number, as they did at the festival, in order to cheer people up. It also turned out that the heroes from the villain's interrogation found out that all for one wants one for all before Shigaraki's body is finished. Also in the data transmitted by Stain was information about the cause of the failure in the Tartar system, and this will help strengthen the protection of Yui. And the heroes also realized that the consciousness of all for one and Shigaraki was synchronized. All Might explained to everyone that he could also one-sidedly communicate with the owners of One for All, but he couldn't hear the answer, although he could feel feelings through them. And they also intercepted the villainous signals, where it was said that in 38 days it would all be over. And this means that in three days Shigaraki's body will be ready, and now they need to figure out how they will deal with it. To do this, they need the help of heroes from other countries, where the people of All for One have already penetrated. And there are many heroes who are already ready to come to the rescue. But because of the bureaucracy, they are still waiting for the decisions of the government. However, there are those who immediately responded. It was the disciple of the Almighty, Star and Stripe. All Might was her mentor, and she is the number one hero in America. She received the teacher's message and immediately went to Japan. If you want to continue, then write about it in the comments.